second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. I'm Kevin Winter. The NBA is in the sprint to the finish. So, too, is the NHL. And today, the NHL trade deadline has come and gone. The Sabres send Captain Kyla Coxo to the Florida Panthers. The Carolina Hurricanes get center of Genny Kuznetsov from the Washington Capitals. The Bruins get Pat Maroon from the Minnesota Wild. Maroon, by the way, has won three straight Stanley Cups. So, there's your lucky leprechaun. The Rangers make a handful of moves. They acquire defenseman Chad Ruedel from the Penguins. They get forward Nick Patton from the Wild. They also get forward Jack Roslovich from the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Lightning get defenseman Matt Dumba from the Arizona Coyotes. The Winnipeg Jets acquire Tyler Toffoli from the New Jersey Devils. Women's college basketball this afternoon. Conference tournament action from the Big Ten. A huge shocker. Maryland hammers. I mean hammers. Top seeded in fourth-ranked Ohio State 82-61 in the quarterfinals. Wide receiver Mike Evans officially re-signs in Tampa today, and he also said he's extremely confident that Baker Mayfield will be back in Tampa Bay as well. ESPN, NBA, doubleheader tonight on ESPN Television. Minnesota, Cleveland, Game 1, Bucks, Lakers, Game 2. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ, Chris Candy, coming up Monday with the legal tampering window set to open. I'll tell you which free agents you should be paying attention to. It's on Sportsman like 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. <laughs> Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. And off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. I'm Matt. Love you, Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. You so. And Mr. Toby Tom Blake. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. A rainy Friday in BR, but my goodness, are we jam-packed, lock-loaded with a ton to do. Let's not waste any time. Let's get going. It's time to pop the top on another edition of AFR with Bud Light. Drink easy. So I've come to the decision uh, who I want the Saints to draft with their first pick in uh, next month's draft. Saints will pick 14 overall, uh, barring a trade to move up, which the Saints are known to do from time to time. But if they do, in fact, stay at number 14, I have decided who I would like the Saints to select. Uh, And I won't make you wait any longer. I'll tell you who it is, and then I'll explain why. Uh, I want to see the Saints draft Olu Fashanu, the offensive tackle out of Penn State. That's it. That's my pick. That's my dream scenario. And everybody has their dream scenario, and maybe there's something that happens in the draft that'll unfold. Good players can fall. You might move up. Maybe there's a quarterback that they fancy. Uh, maybe there's a really good edge that they see at 14. Maybe they go receiver, tight end, safety. I don't know, I don't know what they're going to do. But I've settled on Olu Fashanu as the guy that I want the Saints to take with the 14th overall pick. Here's why. I, I liked him already. And, and if you've been listening to the show... I have been leaning toward wanting the Saints to go offensive line at 14 for a very specific reason. I understand you drafted Trevor Penning two drafts ago, and that's gone belly up. But just because you invested a resource that hasn't panned out doesn't mean you shouldn't invest more resources there because you got to get it right. Your offensive line is ultimately going to be the key to your offense getting back on track. You have to block for your running game. You've got to keep Derek Carr upright 
to allow him to function within this offense that Clint Kubiak is going to be calling. So, yes, there's a lot of things you need on the offense. You need to fix your line. I think you need to get younger and more talented at running back. You certainly need another receiver with Mike Thomas being presumably out. Uh, you, you need productive tight ends. You, you didn't get that out of Foster Moore over Jawan Johnson this past season. So you got a lot of needs. You got a lot of needs on offense, and there's a lot of ways they can go. But for me, quarterback, the guy that protects the quarterback, the guy that affects the quarterback, that's why quarterback, left tackle, defensive end are the three highest paid positions. So if you can got, get a guy in Fashanu at 14, I'm for it. A couple of things about Olu Fashanu that sort of led me to this point where I'm like, okay, that's my guy. That's who I want to see the Saints take. So I didn't know this because I'm not a huge Penn State fan. I don't follow their roster a ton. But Fashanu is only 21 years old and has only played in 21 total games. When he went to Penn State, he was a starter in 2021. I started a game in 2021. Then in 2022, was the starter for the first eight games of the season, suffered an injury against Ohio State, sat the rest of the year. And then this past season, 2023, he started every game at left tackle. Now, the one caveat, the one little asterisk is, I don't know what that injury was. And I searched today. Now, I did not go into the deep recesses of Penn State message board and rumors and what it might have been. But as best I could tell, nobody ever came out and said what that injury was that forced him to miss the end, the last five games of 2022. However, he came back in 2023 and played the full season. Now, Mel Kuyper, post-combine, updated his big board. And Fashanu, just to give you a little background here, Fashanu is a guy that Kuyper says would have been a top 10 pick last year had he come out. He would have been a top 10 pick in the draft in 2023 if he had come out but decided to return to school. By the way, Fashanu gave uh, an interview on why he decided to return to school in 2023, despite being a projected top 10 pick. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different reasons why. Obviously, I want to get my degree and start my master's. And um, I know the way we ended the season last year with the Rose Bowl victory and uh, that being in the New Year's Six Bowl, I mean, that's awesome. But um not only myself, but everyone here right now, we know that we can go much farther than that. So just being a not, just being on the team again, having another opportunity to go to that spot, like that's, you know, it's a pretty big motivation for wanting to come back. Okay, so one of the biggest questions everybody has is will money change a guy? That's every draft pick. We've talked about that for years with Mike Dettelier and other draft analysts. When a guy gets paid, will it change them? Olu Fashanu passed on millions a year ago to finish his degree, to start working on his master's, and because he said, we won the Rose Bowl but knew we could do more. A guy that's clearly motivated outside of football, values his education clearly, but still competitively wanted to do more with his teammates, meaning the money didn't affect his decision. There were other factors. So check that box. A guy that's super competitive, wants to win at a high level, values his team, his teammates, all that sort of stuff. Those are all check marks on the personality when you say, if I'm going to give this guy a lot of money, is it going to change him? Doesn't seem like it with Olu Fashanu. So that's a huge part of that. Guy passed on potential of being a top 10 pick. The other reason now is I think of Fashanu almost in the way of how we talk about Brian Thomas. This may be a good uh, a good uh, parallel. So a year ago, Fashanu would have been a top 10 pick. This year, he might be the third or fourth or fifth offensive lineman off the board because it's a deep offensive line draft class. Brian Thomas, a year ago, might have been a, a top half of round one guy in last year's draft class. But there were no receivers were taken that high. So you didn't have a, a receiver come off the board until like 20 or 21, and then you had this run of four consecutive receivers come off the board in the 20s. Well, a year ago, Brian Thomas would have been the first receiver taken in the draft. Well, Fashanu, a year ago, would have been a top 10 pick. This year, maybe he's there for you at 14. And this is the other thing. So going into the combine, Mel Kuyper, and Mel Kuyper's one guy, again, it's just one person's opinion, but rated Fashanu nine on his big board, the ninth best player in the draft. Coming out of the combine, where Fashanu had a quad injury, he hurt his right leg, his his, uh, or his quad, and missed, uh, and missed the rest of the combine, Kuyper dropped him to 16. 
Now, that's not to say that it's one person's opinion, but the point being, maybe as you see these mock drafts, like Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman went and ran a 4-6. Well, in a really deep receiver class that pushed him down. I think that's what you're seeing here. A guy that, 21 years old, the write-up on him is the exciting part is Fashanu is still developing. He started just 21 career games and turned 21 in December. So he just turned 21. Like, he's not going to be 22 until the end of his rookie season in the NFL. So super talented guy, super athletic, prototypical left tackle, doesn't have a long injury history, hasn't played a... It's not like he played 50 career college games so you're getting a guy that's only played in 21 career college games and you're getting a potential franchise left tackle for the next decade and possibly getting him at a bargain at 14 when a year ago it would have cost you a top 10 pick. So I am, I'm sold right now on Olu Fushanu. That's my hope. That is my target, my hope. That if if the Saints stay at 14 and Olu Fushanu is on the board, I want that to be the pick. And, and potentially you're talking about a guy that could be your franchise left tackle for a decade. And what that allows you to do also is move Trevor Penning inside to guard because that may be how you salvage him. You let him play in a phone booth, be a really aggressive, hand-in-the-dirt, mauler-type run uh, you know, run blocker. And as the Saints go to sort of this, this zone running scheme with Clint Kubiak, maybe that starts to benefit Penning and Fashanu next to him. So the left side of your line could grow together for a decade, pr- presumably, or, or hopefully. So that's where I am. I've made my decision today. I, I I think when you're a team and you have a lot of needs, there's a lot of things that make sense. And that's the Saints. The Saints could use a receiver. They certainly could use help on the offensive line. They could use help at tight end and running back. Like if Brock Bowers is there at 14, great. They need edge rushers. They need a young safety. They, need, they have a lot of needs. But if Fashanu's there on the board at 14 and the Saints pull the trigger, I'm doing backflips because I think that would be an awesome pick. Um, Olu Fushadu. Officially, my dream scenario for the Saints at 14. All right, it's after further review. We're glad to have you aboard with us here. Brought to you by Bud Light. Drink easy in Louisiana with the great taste of Bud Light. Our friends at Mockler are going to be out at the uh, the Indian Holy Festival tomorrow. H-O-L-I. If you've never been, by the way, would highly recommend it. It is such... Hopefully the weather is clear and nice. It is such a beautiful day. Went last year, took Drew... Uh, it's the Holy Festival Indian uh, of color. It's you've probably seen pictures. Everybody wears white, and they got all these like color powder packets, and you just throw. It's like it's just this amazing visual of just powdered color flying in the air, and there's music and beverages, and just people of all different races and backgrounds just enjoying life together. I had so much fun at this last year. I would highly. It's at Repentance Park in downtown Baton Rouge. Would highly recommend it if you can make it. Our friends at Mockler are a sponsor of it as well. There's, of course, adult beverages for purchase and food for purchase, but it's a free event. Just come and enjoy enjoy the day. Trust me, if you're driving down River Road in Baton Rouge and you pass by the Old State Capitol where Repentance Park is, you won't miss it. You will you will see the barricades and all the color flying in the air. It is, it's an awesome thing. So come come out. We hope to see you tomorrow at, um, at the Holy Festival. And, of course, we always invite you to drink easy with the champs. Drink easy with the great taste of Bud Light. Uh, the official beer of AFR and the official beer of the Tigers. Okay, um, Ross Dellinger had a report today over at Yahoo about the next round of um, of realignment and how a lot of the money might be divvied up. So we'll get Ross uh, to join us next. Talk a little college football. Stay here. It's AFR. AFR. Okay, y'all. Today, the uh, spring ag show starts over at the uh, Parker Coliseum at LSU's campus in Clegg's Nursery. We'll have a booth over there. So highly encourage you, if you're going to get by, of the Spring Ag Show. Uh, Go look for our friends at Clegg's with their booth. It's today, Saturday, and Sunday. Four locations in the greater Baton Rouge area. Clegg's will be there as well. A Seagan near Airline, LA-16 in Denham, Mid-City on Donmore, and the Garden Center on Greenwell Springs. Always encourage you to buy local and shop local. Hey, look, uh, the weather's getting warmer. We're seeing the the showers now. Uh, Grass is starting to green up all of your lawn. Hey, listen, if you have weeds, or if you always have the, that clover and those weeds that start to pop up as your lawn comes back to life in the spring, you want to treat your lawn before the weeds pop up. That's right now. Clegg's has the product, so get by any of the four locations of Clegg's Nursery in the greater Baton Rouge area. Buy local, shop local, tell them Matt sent you in to Clegg's Nursery. 
I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. IU Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $17,500 off new 23-1500 Bitcoin trucks. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $17,500 off new Ram 1500 trucks. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared towards seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Electricity is all around us and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. Another day has brought uh, another report from our buddy Ross Dellinger over at Yahoo doing a great job. Uh, and this time it's about revenue distribution for the new CFP. Ross, good enough to join us for a couple of minutes here. Hey, how are you, dude? Hey, Matt. Good. How are you doing? Awesome. Are you drinking any bourbon? Not yet, but uh, give it a few hours here. I just put okay. the pork shoulder on the grill for some smoking. So, oh, uh, boy. I didn't know, literally mean come right after now. The pork. I more I more so meant just in general. Have you experienced anything new? It's called a, it's called a kicker. It's just like <laughs> softening you up to get to the real stuff first. Sort of disarm the the uh, disarm the guest a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I don't know that I've tried anything uh, completely new lately. You know, it's, okay. it's it's to the it's to the usuals. Okay, I like that. Well, next time you're in town, come on over. You know, we'll we'll get something good off the bar. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe mm -hmm. the uh, the powers that be in college football could afford some of that really good whiskey, Ross, because they're making a whole mm -hmm. lot of money. How about that transition? So um, mm -hmm. let's walk through your report today um, about the the revenue distribution for a proposed a new expanded college football playoff. Well, yeah, it's, um, you know, there are three kind of, uh, break it down, kind of three buckets right now for uh, for college football, the college football playoff leaders are, are kind of exploring and trying to come to an agreement on, and really it's the power of four, right? The, the power of four commissioners in their executive boards, each league trying to come 
to an agreement on these things. And number one is the playoff format. Number two is a revenue distribution model. And number three is what they term governance. And it's just like voting rights, basically, power, voting, wage voting, things like that. The number two, the revenue distribution, is the most kind of important piece right now. So they need to get an agreement for a revenue distribution deal. And all of this starts in 2026, right? You know, your listeners... If they, uh, to go back a little bit, uh, the, the, the deal with ESPN, um, that binds the 10 FBS leagues in Notre Dame has two more years. So it's out after the 2025 playoff and we have nothing beyond 2025. And so that's what they're trying to get to in agreement on all this stuff. And then the, the number one, the, the biggest thing is revenue distribution for 2026 and beyond. So they're, they've been examining that quite a bit over the last probably two weeks or so, certainly over the last few days. And we know that they've kind of uh, zeroed in on a model that, um, you know, uh, it's pretty shocking. Uh, uh, We knew the SEC and big 10 would ask for more money, obviously in a base distribution model. And they are certainly doing that. Um, uh, There's, you know, the new TV deal will be worth $1.3 billion a year. So, Trying to divide that money is what we're talking about here. And the SEC and Big Ten in the latest proposal would get 58% um, annually of that base distribution, uh, which comes into about $760 million between the two. Uh, and that is much different than the ACC and Big 12, which combined for about uh, somewhere around $440 million, about $300, $320 million dollars lower than what the SEC and Big Ten, and this is annual payments to schools. So by a school basis, Matt, it's around 21 to $23 million per school for mm-hmm. SEC and Big Ten. For ACC and Big 12, it's around 12 to $13 million. So a pretty sizable gap yeah. in something that is different from how they did the revenue in years past, which usually was split evenly uh, among the Power Four or Power Five at the time. You also noted that the revenue piece seems to be taking precedent over a format. And what we're talking about, Ross, just to be clear, is a 14-team format potentially, right? Because we know it'll be 12 teams for the next two years. And then beyond that, potentially, we're going to 14. Why is the revenue... This might be a dumb question, but why is the <laughs> revenue taking precedent over the format? It, it is it is somewhat dumb, but as they say, Matt, there are no dumb questions, right? Just dumb answers. Or dumb people uh, I, that ask I will, questions. <laughs> I'll say this, you know, you, and you know the answer, right? Because because money is the most important thing, and and so the money is the most significant thing here, especially as we we noted in that story a little subtly, is that the revenue distribution right now um, is it's always important, obviously, but. Um, it's probably more important than ever, right? Because the major conferences in their in their schools, especially there in the SEC, right, are gearing up to pay athletes directly um, with some kind of new model. So they need more money to do that. Uh, and, and so the money is just a really big piece, uh, and it's very important. And so basically the past revenue model um, was about 20% to the group of five, it was about 80% to the Power Five, and the Power Five split evenly about the, about 80%. They each got roughly about 17 or 18% uh, of the CFP base. And now we're talking, right, the SEC and Big Ten getting 21 and then, to, or, or I'm sorry, 29% uh, each. Now it would be a little more per school for the SEC because they have 16 compared to the Big Ten's 18, um, as we talked about earlier. But but the money is just, it's just really important. It, it's the most important thing. And then there's kind of a checklist, right? The first thing is the money. They come to an agreement with that. Then the next checklist would be coming to an agreement on a voting structure, mostly t- related to a format. So how a new format will be decided. It's going to be decided by the power four, but how would there be some kind of weighted voting there? So that's the second check box. And the third is, agreeing and finalizing the ESPN deal. So an actual agreement on a format might not come until after the ESPN deal is signed and delivered and ESPN has put a deadline uh, on the CFP. I don't know if it's a specific day, but as we reported in that story, by the end of next week uh, is kind of an internal deadline that the CFP has placed. 
Uh, Ross Dellinger is with us. He's on Twitter at Ross Dellinger, uh, Yahoo Sports. I'll give him a follow. One of the things that you said there, Ross, so, and if you, you missed Ross's report, essentially is a massive gap in the revenue for a new CFP model that the SEC and the Big Ten are sort of leveraging their influence. Ross, do the ACC and the Big 12 have a voice here? Like, is there anything they can do to try to get the SEC and the Big Ten down off that number? Well, I, yeah, I think I think that is still an ongoing process. Um, however, I, I don't know that I expect any real change to the numbers that we put out. Um, you know, I, I don't know that there'll be any wholesale changes to that. Mm. And I think it's all based off of you know, pa- past participation in the CFP. We broke it down in that story. You know, SEC and Big Ten account- accounted for 72.5% of CFP participants the last 10 years. Now, those numbers are a little murky, right? Because they count, they consider realignment moves. So Oklahoma and Texas will be counted for the SEC. Washington, Oregon, USC, and UCLA would be counted uh, for the Big Ten and Arizona and Arizona State and Colorado and Utah for the Big 12. So, uh, and of course, Cal Stanford and SMU for, for the ACC. So th- those numbers do kind of consider realignment. And that's kind of how they base the revenue distribution around. That's, that's what they did that. Whether that's fair or not, I don't know, but that's what they did. Uh, and look, we're here in this place where the SEC and Big Ten are asking for so much more money because of realignment. Right, mostly, you know, the, the, the breakup of the Pac-12 um, and their schools scattered, and then the Oklahoma and Texas coming to the SEC has made it a situation where arguably the SEC and Big Ten combined for probably 12 of the top 15 brands in college football, and uh, so they want uh, they want something more from their uh, their value. You know, they're they're putting in more is what they claim, and so they want more from it. Ross, I get the sense that the SEC and the Big Ten are like a boa constrictor and they're just squeezing the life out of everybody else and we're heading for the inevitability, which is they're the only two that are left. Do you think I'm misreading that? I mean, I'm just strictly asking an opinion here. Uh, no, not really. I don't, I don't think you're misreading it. Uh, you know, they're uh, trying to think of a a good analogy here. Um, a boa constrictor you know, the gap, squeezing the life. Well, that, that's a good. That, that's a good one. That's a good one. I was trying to think of something more. When, when you look at the gap, um, if you break if you break FBS, which are 133 teams, into three tiers now: the Power Two, uh, SEC, Big Ten, uh, the another the other two, the Big Twelve and ACC, and then you 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 break down to the six uh, or the five group of five conferences the gaps between each of those continues to grow um in this revenue distribution model all it will do is exacerbate the growing gaps uh and if you take that and you push it into the future and you look six to eight years down the road guess what you know a a gap that was um uh, the size of a city block is uh, is now going to be the size of a city. And, and so you can imagine when we get to that point, and I'm sure we will, what will happen? And I think you're probably on the right path when it comes to uh, the the separation of the top two leagues or maybe at least the top four. Ross, uh, what's real quick, what, before we let you go, timeline, what, what's the next step? Well, uh, over the weekend, there'll be some pretty intense, I think, conversations to settle on a revenue distribution model and a kind of voting structure related to a format. Um, Not a format, but uh, just how a format would be determined. So I think those two things need to happen, probably will, over the next five to seven days. By the end of next week, there should be an agreement, and they should be finalizing the ESPN deal, the the new ESPN deal. Five to seven days, uh, we could have a new ESPN deal. All right, uh, Ross Dellinger, Yahoo, on Twitter, at Ross Dellinger. Uh, get you some brown water, man. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. All right, thanks, buddy. See you. Be well. Uh, the, I think um, 
from my perspective, uh, real quickly, brought to you by First South Farm, credit firstsouthland.com. I'll, I'll follow up on the Ross thing here before we break. First South Farm, credit firstsouthland.com. If you're thinking of buying land, I've been telling you about this. It's been my pleasure to tell you about First South Farm Credit and to get to know, you know the men and women that, that work so hard for First South Farm Credit because they've been helping Louisianians make those dreams come true since 1916, more than 100 years, First South Farm Credit. If you want to buy land, you go to First South Farm Credit. Your first call is First South Farm Credit. Your first option is First South Farm Credit. Go to firstsouthland.com. That's firstsouthland.com. Dot com. If it's a thousand acres for agriculture, farmland, if it's that the 20 acres in Zachary or St. Francisville or Watson, if you want to buy that dream home, uh, that land to build your dream home, First South Farm Credit can help. FirstSouthLand.com. FirstSouthLand.com. Um, with respect to what Ross is saying, so five to seven days, we should have the, the new ESPN contract. But, you know, this is one of the things that. I um, we've talked about here for years, for years, and I kind of got laughed at about where we were heading for an inevitability of college football, one college football, when you're going to see a collaboration of the media rights in the same way that the NFL does it. It's you don't have the NFC West doesn't have their own TV deal, the AFC East doesn't have their own TV deal. It's an NFL TV deal, and it's split evenly among all the teams. That's where we're headed ultimately for college football, and we just continue to contract. We The, the Pac-12 is no more, and what you're seeing right now is the the SEC and the Big Ten continue to assert their power, they're, and they're going to, and, and in so doing, and taking up more of that pie, they're going to weaken further the teams that remain in the ACC and the Big 12 to where the the teams that have an option in those leagues to leave the way that. USC, UCLA, Stanford, Oregon all had an option to leave the Pac-12. Did. They 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 jumped ship for higher ground. Well, whoever is remaining in the Big 12 or the ACC that has an opportunity to jump ship for higher ground is going to do it. Florida State, Clemson, Miami, whoever it is. And the rest are going to be left as the have-nots. It's I've been saying this for a decade. I think everyone is just not like you're you're seeing it. Like it's it's starting to manifest. It's not that I'm Nostradamus or anything. It was just a very obvious thing that was happening based on you could just see the dominoes falling in place and the trajectory that college football was going. I think a lot of people just didn't want to see it. You had people latching on, holding on to what was. And the other thing that I've told you too is there are, you heard Ross say it, there are and have been, I, I've had firsthand conversations with athletic administrators at, at universities that are preparing for the inevitability of revenue sharing with their student athletes. You heard Ross just say it. Part of the reason the SC and the Big Ten are going so ham here, they want more money because they know they're going to have to pay student athletes. It seems obvious now, but something we've been talking about here for a while. So it, um, it's just, it's where we're going. And it's going, it is, go and the thing that I want to reiterate mostly, we got a break, but this is going to be a good thing for the fans. You're going to see better games. You're going to see a real playoff. You're not going to be force-fed that garbage weekend in the third Saturday of November every year because people are you get your rent a win. You're late, like you're going to see games you actually want to see every week, and it's going to be a great thing for college. It's going to be a great thing for college football. Okay, it's after further review. We'll go around the SEC next. AFR. We're brought to you by Glow Resources. Man, I love telling you about Glow Resources. What a great company. Man, if you drive down Perkins Road, you will see their new corporate headquarters. Glow Resources, they're headquartered here in Baton Rouge, but they've got offices in New Orleans and Houston and Miami and all over, and they can help you no matter where your business is, no matter where your business is owned and operated, and no matter where you do work, Glow Resources can help find you the employees you need. They're not a temp staffing agency. That they don't want. They'll if you're an employee, they'll find you. Glow Resources works for you, the business owner. So if you're a business owner and you've struggled to find skilled blue collared labor, or struggle to find managers, they have a white collar division as well. Comes with a ninety three percent success rate and a guarantee. If within sixty days the employee they hire for you doesn't work out. They'll find a new employee for free or refund you, give you a prorated refund. It's Glow Resources. GlowResources.com.
Brack teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps were held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 9. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. Put him on camera, Polly. Put him on camera. There he is. Let's get Jesse getting it done over there. Jesse, what, what grade are you? Huh? I'm a senior in high school. So Jesse's a senior at Liberty Magnet. Been interning with us. I told Muse today. I told Muse today, hey, let that kid touch the live board today. So Jesse just brought us back from break. Great job, Jesse. You did an awesome job. Dude. How about you? Around, give that man a round of applause. Thank you. How does, you it, so how does much. it feel? How does it feel to, to be in control of the ship? You're I'm, steering the ship over there. I'm very honored. No, you. I, well, I don't mean that. Are you honored? Like, do you oh. feel? Do you feel empowered? Something like that. I'm kind of nervous. But a little nervous. Yeah. Get it right. Yeah. Okay. Great job. I just videoed that for you. You can show your mom and everybody. I mean, we got you. We got it on TV too, and on YouTube and everything. Everybody got to see you. So, great job. Don't worry if you screwed up. Mew screws up every day, and we still let him come back. So Not you're every good. Day. Yeah, well, yeah. Not every day. Yeah, give it time. Hey, it's a storming outside, and uh, LSU baseball has announced a schedule change. Game one, LSU Xavier tonight has been moved back to 8 p.m. So they're going to play it still, obviously, but they're going to move it back the start time to 8 p.m. The weather's supposed to clear by about 6. At least that's what the radar, so the forecast is showing around 6. The weather should clear, so it'll give a little time. Uh, first pitch was 6.30, so they're bumping it back about 90 minutes. A little bit later start for LSU and Xavier game one tonight, but it looks like they'll still be able to get it in. For what it's worth, of course, we'll see Luke Holman. Um, Jay Johnson was on OTB earlier this week. Um, did uh, Is this the story he told about uh, after the championship and recruiting Holman? Is that that cut? I, I I took that part out to shorten it, but yes, that that okay. A yes or no would have been fine. Use again, Jesse. Don't worry. Like he screws up the show. Well, every it day. wasn't the correct answer. So, <laughs> hey, Muse, is that the is that the story about him recruiting Holman? 
No. Okay. But it was part that, of the answer. Uh, I did that just for you. I'm sorry. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, here was Jay Johnson on OTB earlier this week about uh, Holman's start to the season. As we were trying to recruit him, like, okay, look, guys, like this is a four-game swing in the SEC standings, one oh, way or wow. the other. You know, so I could sit here and talk about all this stuff. That's how valuable I think he is. I, I've told this before, like when we were preparing to play them, he did not pitch against us. But last year's team, there wasn't too many guys that had me a little bit like, man, this guy could be a problem for a little bit. You know, like I felt that way about Josh Hartle from Wake Forest. I felt that way about Rhett Louder. I mean, Luke was a guy I felt that way about. You know, people haven't really talked about him. He's done got this huge, like, outgoing personality. Doesn't need or want any attention. Shows up in the 15 strikeouts to one walk, and that's that's Luke. Um, the story I was referring to is is uh, J- that was Jay Johnson on OTV. That was Thursday, uh, and you go get that full interview um, at the 104.5 ESPN YouTube channel. If you go to the videos, you can go watch the full uh, interview. Jay, t- the story was great. Where it, and, and the. Really, the anecdote was him saying he he felt Luke Holman was a four-game swing. So this was LSU wins the national championship. They get home. They have their celebration. The next day, Jay Johnson's on a plane to go meet Luke Holman. That's how that's how vital he thought he was to this team. And you heard him say he felt Luke Holman was a four-game swing either way. I mean, that's the difference between being a 17-win SEC team or a 21-win SEC team and hosting a Super it being the top eight national seat, if, if Jay's right. And by the way... He's as detail-oriented, uh, maniacal about the details coaches I've ever seen. So, I believe him. So, yes, um, really significant. We'll get another chance to see Luke Coleman tonight. Final um, final non-conference weekend before, of course, next week, LSU is in Starkville against Mississippi State. Okay, we're brought to you by Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry, LMFJ.com, LMFJ.com. Weekend's here. Gents, spring is here. If as the flowers and grass start to spring, your love is springing and you want it to spring eternal by dropping to a knee and presenting her a beautiful diamond, a symbol of your love in eternity, Lee Michaels can help. Locations all over Louisiana, two in Baton Rouge, Lafayette, New Orleans, Shreveport, 10 in all. And because they buy diamonds for all of those locations and they buy in bulk, they can offer you the best price possible on the most exquisite diamonds you'll find anyone. Thrill her, gentlemen, with a gift in the red box from Lee Michaels Fine Jewelry. LMFJ.com. Okay, we do it every day about this time. Let's go around the SEC. Around the SEC, bringing you the biggest news from the nation's best conference, the Kentucky Wildcats. 2025 quarterback Brennan Ward, a three-star out of Ohio. He's committed to Kentucky. He's the fourth prospect to join Kentucky's 2025 class and the second quarterback, 6'2", 205 pounder, the number 641 overall prospect, the 41st best quarterback in the country. The Arkansas Razorbacks. TCU is reportedly targeting uh, Jimmy Smith from the Arkansas staff as their running backs coach. That's according to Matt Zenitz of 247. A Smith worked with TCU OC Kendall Bryles at Arkansas. Coach Rocket Sanders with the Razorbacks. Under Jimmy Smith, Razorbacks averaged nearly 140 rushing yards per game this past season. The Georgia Bulldogs. And former Georgia linebacker uh, Jawan Taylor has joined Del McGee at Georgia State. Uh, Taylor worked with McGee at Georgia as an assistant director of player development. Taylor will be a grad assist, assistant on the Georgia State staff. Taylor was a linebacker at Georgia from 2015 to 2018, played in 46 career games. Real quick, on the hardwood, uh, we'll run through the schedule for the weekend. Of course, you know LSU will host Missouri on Saturday evening. But uh, the schedule as it goes, um, it'll be the 11 a.m. Central Time tip-off. Our Kansas, uh, a miserable season. That'll conclude the regular season at Alabama as they'll get it started. Texas A&M is at Ole Miss. South Carolina will visit Mississippi State. Number four, Tennessee. They host Kentucky. At 3.30 on the SEC Network, Vanderbilt will host Florida. And at the 5.30 window on the SEC Network, Georgia is at 13th-ranked Auburn. Okay, there you have it. That is around the SEC. We're glad to have you aboard with us here. Let me knock out our final break of hour number one when we come back. Uh, Brian Kelly, when he met with reporters on Thursday after practice, we got to a lot of that yesterday. One thing we didn't touch on that I want to revisit was Brian Kelly addressing how LSU plans to address the running game without Jaden Daniels. We'll get to that next at AFR.
AFR. Brought to you by River City's One Hour Air, where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. You know, whenever a technician from River City's One Hour Air is coming to your house, you will get a call alerting you the technician's on the way. You'll get an email and a text message alerting you the tech, that the tech is on their way with the name, photo, and reviews of that technician so you know exactly who is coming into your home. That's why you see so many five-star Google reviews when we talk about River City's One Hour Air. Here's one for Marius Rito, who said, very pleased with the results of the work and the professionalism displayed by the technician. Kevin went above and beyond, finished the job in a timely fashion with no issues at all. Kevin arrived on time, finished before the anticipated time frame, all while dealing with freezing climate conditions overall. Very pleased with the experience. Would definitely recommend Kevin and One Hour Air for any work need a job well done. It's River Cities, One Hour Air. 752 one where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. It was a humid day Barefoot children play Looking for the summer shade Time to slip Like cypress stumps, your roots are planted deep inside of me. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques, Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. BRAC teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs there are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. Damn. Wrapping up hour number one, oh, we're going to head to Como. Our buddy Drew King will be with us here in about uh, 12 minutes from right now. I'll get a thumbnail on the LSU-Missouri basketball game. Uh, just sort of out of obligation. Uh, they're going to play at Missouri's 0-17 in the league. Uh, I'll probably end up getting some Missouri football questions in there as well, coming off a pretty significant season. So we'll talk to Drew King uh, after the top of the hour. Um, Brian Kelly met with reporters on Thursday after the first media availability. And naturally, one of the things that you are going to ask about this team 
is replacing all the offensive production. Yes, look, you're losing the Heisman Trophy winner, two 1,000-yard receivers, but it's not just Jaden and his ability to throw the football to Brian Thomas, Malik Neighbors, you know the drill, but I mean, Jaden Daniels also was a 1,000-yard rusher for you this past season. So not only do you have to replace the yardage, but it's the yardage from the quarterback position. So just with that on its face alone, you are fundamentally going to look different because you will not have a quarterback that's capable of running for a 1,000 yards. So Brian Kelly was asked about replacing Jaden Daniels' rushing production. He kind of took a, an interesting spin on it. You can do it with, you know, perimeter throws that Jaden gave us with perimeter runs. And you can do it not simply with the running backs, but how you use your offensive line. We think that we've got, if not one of the best, uh, certainly one of the top offensive lines in the country. And they're athletic as well. Uh, We think our tackles can move and pull. So I think a run game that now becomes a lot more diversified in the sense that we can start moving and pulling our offensive linemen to create an offensive running game that strikes on a much wider front. I think certainly the running backs will play a part in this, but I think the focus needs to be much more on how the offensive line will play a much larger role in what we do to enhance our running game. Consider the source there as well. Consider the source there as well. That's Brian Kelly, who, from the day he's hired, we have highlighted two positions that he has pumped into the NFL more than any other. Those two are tight end and offensive line. If Brian Kelly's telling me that, yes, I get it, you're replacing a quarterback that ran for 1,000 yards a year ago. As a matter of fact, it was 1,134. Let me not shortchange Jaden those extra 134 yards, yes. And he's saying, you're looking at it wrong. Yeah, our quarterback isn't going to be the guy getting those yards. I mean, Garrett Nussmeyer has never been a running threat in his career. That's just not what he does. A year ago, Nussmeyer had one rush for one yard. Uh, In his career, his rushing total, uh, Garrett Nussmeyer's, is, well, I believe he's sub, well, I'm trying to look at his career log now. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I pulled up his, his season stats. Um, no, here, as a as a freshman, he ran five times for negative 46. Sophomore, one for negative 13. That was a sack. And then this year, one carry for one yard. So you're talking about a guy that in his career has rushed for a negative 58 yards. Garrett Nussmeyer is not going to give you anything in the running game. That's okay. You don't need him to. Like, you don't have to have a quarterback that's a dynamic runner. It doesn't matter. But what Brian Kelly's saying there is because you have – physical, athletic linemen, it's going to dynamically change how you run the ball. So, whereas so much of Jaden's ability last year was when plays were breaking down, the the 50-yard touchdown run against Florida. When a play is breaking down, he can, he can be dynamic in that respect. Well, now think of it in terms of how you attack the running game. It doesn't have to be power or zone specific. You could pull linemen, it could be more creative in the way that you run to make up. And he even talked about the extent, like the short passing game as an extension of the running game. So uh, I think that's going to be the really interesting part to see how this all develops. Yes, I, I think so many of us, my hand's in the air, I am fired up to see what it will look like if Caleb Williams gets 12 to 15 carries a game. Like, what is that going to look like with that dude? Josh Williams is coming back for, for another season, uh, a sixth collegiate season, which considering all the running back depth you lost this offseason, yes, having another veteran scholarship back there is impactful. We'll see what happens with Trey Holly and his legal situation. And then you have Caden Durham coming in, the freshman. So you should have enough talent, enough bodies, but it's going to be more so how they use it that I think is going to be really exciting. So uh, interesting little tidbit there from Brian Kelly. When uh, when he he was asked specifically about Jaden Daniels replacing Jaden Daniels' rushing offense. And he didn't talk about another back, another skill guy. He talked about the offensive line because it's going to be how they use them to create those running lanes that will get LSU back on track. That's just one thing I don't worry about. And Brian Kelly is, has proven that if you have faith in in his ability to recruit develop at that position, like he has rewarded that faith. I mean, and hat tip Brad Davis. Brad Davis is the one who's there you know, grinding and developing those guys every day, and he's been magnificent recruiting also. But it's just very clear that what they're looking for 
uh, that Brian Kelly has targeted has has been successful, and they've been able to get massive production. So something they'll keep working on this spring and into fall camp. All right, it's after further review. We're glad you're hanging out with us here on a Friday edition of AFR. I've been loving telling you about Evermore. Evermore is all-natural, great-tasting water available at local retailers. Look, you hear Hunt doing the lives with us if you're in Baton Rouge. The remote's over at Rouse's. Uh, Evermore, you'll find that at Rouse's or uh, Albertson's Target. Great local retailers all over the place, but... Uh, I really strongly encourage you. This is a Louisiana product. It is all natural, great tasting water. It's natural artesian water. If you want a healthier lifestyle, if you're an athlete that wants to hydrate better, look, this, honestly, the weekend's here. You might be, you know, throwing back some grandpa's old cough medicine. This can help with superior hydration. This has been known to help people who are acid sufferers, heartburn, indigestion, reflux, because it's all natural and because of the natural sodium bicarbonate. Listen, they don't make any medical claims, but you can go read reviews and understand why people trust Evermore. E-V-A-M-O-R. That's evermore.com. All right, hour number two is next. AFR. All right, y'all, we are going to head up to um, uh, to Como here right after Sports Center. Looking forward to that conversation with Drew King to talk a little LSU Missouri. We are brought to you by our friends over at Michelli. Michelli Weighing and Measurement. Michelli.com. Michelli.com. Tell you what, I was just talking to you about Evermore, right? And Evermore... Think about it. The amount of force you need to twist a bottle top open, there is a set amount of force that that should require. Well, how do the machines calibrate to know that when they're going through the the assembly line and that cap's put on there? Well, it's a machine that's calibrated by Michelli. Michelli weighing and measurement. Michelli.com, Michelli.com. The easiest way to say it, if you weigh or measure something, they sell, service, rent the products used to weigh and measure. On, uh, on Tuesday of this coming week, uh, I'll be flying up to New York. I'll go check my bag and put my luggage on that scale. Scale calibrated by Michelle. It's Michelle Weighing and Measurement. Online at Michelle.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric.
the best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. This is Sports. I'm Kevin Winter, breaking news out of the NBA this afternoon. An MRI on Steph Curry's right ankle sprain comes back clean. Sources tell ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski no structural damage, but a clearer timetable on Steph's return is not going to come till over the next few days, seeing how Steph's ankle responds. The expectation is that Curry won't miss many games. The Warriors next play tomorrow night at home against San Antonio and then visit the Spurs on Monday night. Steph suffered the ankle injury late last night's loss to the Chicago Bulls. Second round of the Arnold Palmer Invitational at Bay Hill. Now, for those of you trying to figure out which event this is, Here's the easy explanation because I'm sure you've all seen the video. This is the event where years ago, a golfer walking down the fairway walked up to a sleeping alligator and tapped the alligator on its tail, sending the reptile scurrying into the water. Probably don't recommend that. But yes, it's this event. All right, as for today, Shane Lowry, Hideki Matsuyama, Russell Henley, Brian Harmon all share the lead atop the leaderboard at seven under par. NBA tonight, we got a doubleheader. T-Wolves and Cavs followed by the Bucks and the Lakers starting at 7.30 Eastern. Hey, it's your resident Super Bowl champ Chris Candy coming up Monday with the legal tampering window set to open. I'll tell you which free agents you should be paying attention to. It's on Sports We Like 6 a.m. Eastern right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. <laughs> Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Hour two, off we go. Welcome aboard, AFR, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. I'm Matt. This is Shaq O'Neal, and I hate Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. Mm, you And Mr. Toby Tom Play. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Our guy Mincy will be here at the bottom of this hour. We'll talk some Saints with Matthew Paris in hour number three. We're looking forward to that. Uh, LSU basketball wrap up the regular season Saturday evening over at the PMAC, and they welcome in a Mizzou team, which to say this has been a struggle is probably a giant understatement. Missouri yet to win a conference game this year, 0-17, and um, they can't get one uh, on Saturday night at the PMAC. They will wear the collar for the year. Drew King has been there for every step of the way, covers Missouri basketball for Power Mizzou. He's with us now. How are you, Drew? I'm doing well. How are y'all doing? Doing really well, man. Thanks for the time. Um, let me just start with a kind of an obvious one. What has gone so terribly wrong for Mizzou this year? Yeah, so I think it's kind of twofold. Um, the first part is they've been hammered with injuries. They've got like six guys out right now. Um, a, a lot of those have been at the wing position, right? You have Caleb Grill and John Tanjay who both suffered season ending injuries when they were both kind of expected to be pretty key parts of the rotation. And so without them, um, you know, Mizzou's had to throw like some freshmen into the fire. They're playing, you know, a walk on big man, more minutes than probably any other walk on in the country. So, um, that's been kind of a difficult part of the season to navigate. And then once they lost kind of three in a row after Caleb Grill went down, you knew that they were starting to leak confidence a little bit. And that carried over into the SEC season where now, like, um, you, you kind of expect them to lose every mm-hmm. night because it, it, and each game is kind of going the, the same way. They're following the same script every night. So um, it, it's definitely been a tough year for the team all season long. What's been that script? So the script is usually that they will come out and and kind of keep the game close in the first half. Um, They'll usually have a a pretty good start to the second half, maybe even take a lead. Um, And then they always just find a way to fall apart in the last 10 minutes, whether they're, you know, down five or up two, um, they can never seem to get enough momentum to build a sizable enough lead to come out with the win. Mm. How much pressure is there on Dennis Gates? 
Right now, I wouldn't say a ton of pressure, right? He still had like a very good first season as a head coach. I don't think you can count that out. Um, but this is obviously like a historically bad season. There's a lot that's gone wrong. And so um, I think coming into the year, his seat was pretty ice cold. And, and now it's definitely thawed out and starting to get a little bit warmer. But um, he got a contract extension that increased his buyout after that first season. So um, it, it, it'd be pretty expensive to, to go in another direction, either after this year or the year after. But um, so I, I, I don't think that there's um, necessarily pressure from a job security standpoint, but there is pressure like to make sure this doesn't happen again moving forward, right? I don't think anybody expected them to go 0-18 in SEC play. Well, they're not 0 and 18 yet. Uh, the, LSU's right. got to take care of business on Saturday, uh, which I think many of us assume they will. If there is a path for Missouri to come to Baton Rouge and win, how does that look? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing is going to be their ability to get to the free throw line. It's something that Dennis Gates has harped on his players about all season long, um, and it seems like the f- message is finally starting to break through to them. Um, over their last four games, they're averaging 28 free throw attempts per game, um, and so if they are able to kind of slow the the tempo of the game down a little bit, draw fouls, get LSU into foul trouble. Um, and earn some easy points at the free throw line. I think that'll go a long way for them staying competitive in the game. They allow about 80 points a game, Drew. Uh, What has been so bad defensively there for Missouri? That's a great question. So for starters, I think Caleb Grill going down, he was probably their best defender on the perimeter. Um, Without him, they have not been the same defensively all season long. Um, On top of that, I think that they were expecting somebody like Connor Vanover to be able to anchor the back line of their defense around the rim a little bit better than he has. Um, But that really just hasn't been the case this year. So I think it's just kind of a lot of defensive shortcomings. They they go after turnovers, which leads to some mistakes, right? Some wide open threes. Um, And and yeah, it's, it's been probably the biggest Achilles heel for this team is that like, even when they are in close games, they can't get the stops that they need without fouling. Mm. Um, and, and so that usually keeps them from either hanging on to a lead or being able to get over the hump and finally take a lead late that would help them get the win. Uh, what is, um, I know you're, you're the, the Missouri basketball writer, but I would assume with Football season having the year they did and spring getting ramped up, that's where most of the attention from the Missouri fan base has got to be on excitement around the football program. Is there any temperature there for basketball at all right now? You know, you'd be surprised. They they have pretty consistently still drawn crowds above 10,000 uh, uh, for home. Right. Like, so I think the community, like, wants this basketball team to be good. They were selling out pretty much every night last season when things were going well. And so you're seeing a little bit of a drop off, but not like an empty stadium still, even though they've gone on a 17 game losing streak. And so I think that, um, like I said, the community wants the basketball team to be good. Um, The fan base is still here, um, but you also don't want to see more people lose interest given the way things are going. You want to kind of change the trend around here. Uh, it is uh, no matter what the sport is, when you see a team in the SEC or in any league go winless, it's just a little shocking, right? I mean, no matter mm-hmm. what your, no matter what the issues are with personnel, you still should just never see something. If you're going to go winless, just something just went so terribly wrong that year on top of of, of whatever's compounding. But uh, that's what Dennis Gates and Missouri staring at. They can't get a win. On uh, on Saturday there at the Maverick Center, uh, Drew. How how do you see it going Saturday evening? Yeah, I think that um, it, it, I think Mizzou will be competitive, right? That that's one other thing that you can't say about this team is that they don't fight. Um, they're not typically getting blown out every single night, right? Auburn's kind of a, an exception, but most of these games they're losing by single digit points, and so I, I expect them to come out just as motivated as ever. I know that they don't want to finish the season with a winless conference record, um, but I also just don't know that they have the pieces to get a win over LSU. Um, I think that LSU is a really good shooting team, um, and that's something that Missouri's kind of struggled to defend is the three-point line. So um, I, 
I'll, I think Ken Palm is giving uh, Mizzou like a 22% chance to win, and I, I think that's pretty accurate. I think Mizzou would win this game maybe one out of five times. Mm. I'm looking at ESPN's analytics right there. They've got LSU with an 82.4% chance of Missouri, yeah. but 17%. So uh, we'll see the line when it comes out. But to LSU and Missouri uh, Saturday evening there at the Maravich Center. Drew King covers Missouri for Power Mizzou. He's on Twitter at DrewKing0222. Hey, man, we appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It's our pleasure. We're brought to you by South Point Volkswagen. SouthPointVW.com, new and certified pre-owned. In Baton Rouge and online, southpointvw.com. Remember, for our Southwest Louisiana listeners, if you're there in Lafayette or Lake Charles, Southwest Volkswagen is a closer option for you. But you can always get to the website. Remember, um, if it's on the lot, it's online. New and certified pre-owned, southpointvw.com. I keep telling you about this. For the rest of the month of March, the March Volkswagen incentives are crazy. You get a brand new Tiguan for 0% APR for 60 months. Six zero five years. 0% for five years on a brand new Tiguan. It's a great opportunity to go see our friends at South Point Volkswagen. Shop them online and then just swing on by, test drive. It's South Point Volkswagen. Airline just north of Highlander, southpointvw.com. South Point Volkswagen, what's your direction? Um, I, I don't suspect Missouri is... Re- Look, whenever you... When you're 0 17 in the league and you're 8 and 22 overall, and you've had a 17 game losing streak, you kind of, if you're LSU, you kind of fear like a losing streak isn't going to last forever, right? Eventually they're going to break through and win one. If you're LSU, you can't have that happen on Saturday. Like the thing about LSU is while we've complimented this team for the improvement they've made even during the year, going from the second game of the season, losing on your home floor to Nichols and getting embarrassed by Syracuse and Kansas State, Texas, to where you're now staring down the opportunity of, of a 500 conference record, when a year ago you were 2-16. and 16. I'm going to be plus 7 year to year in the conference standings. Would be a shining achievement for Matt McMahon. I'm not saying that's anybody's goal. I want to be clear. When we talk about this basketball team, I'm not telling you that that's your goal. I've been very clear about that all year, to be 500 in the league and go to the NIT. But context matters. The thing that could muck the whole thing up is you lose on your home floor to an 8-22 and Missouri team that's 0-17 in the league, and that puts your NIT hopes on life support going into the SEC tournament where now you got to go do work there to try to overcome a bad loss on your home floor. So you're not good enough to assume anything if you're LSU. Go take care of business. Beat Missouri. Get to 500 conference play. Go take your swings there at the SEC basketball tournament. We'll see you in, uh, in the NIT. Okay, it's after further review. When I got a quick break, um, Michael Thomas is still tweeting. I don't quite know why. And for those of you that are defending him, that's even more perplexing. Um, but I do want to talk about that a smidge and... What a fascinating number that came out about the money the Saints have, the actual dollars, not not talking about the salary cap, the actual dollars the Saints have spent over the last three years. This might floor you. We'll talk about it next. It's AFR. AFR. Brought to you by the Watermark Hotel and the Renaissance Hotel, two great, amazing hotel properties, the Watermark downtown, the Renaissance Southtown. We tell you all the time about the Watermark, which is Baton Rouge's original high-rise building in downtown Baton Rouge. It was the old Louisiana National Bank building. Listen, if you're right now, by the way, shout out to the Watermark, which is up in the has been nominated for the best of two two five, the best hotel in Baton Rouge, and the best of two two five nominees. So you can get by and vote for the Watermark Hotel. We strongly encourage you to do that. It is the Watermark is Baton Rouge's premier hotel property. So uh, if you're going to be voting for best two two five, vote for our friends over at the Watermark Hotel. And of course, not just the Watermark downtown, but the Renaissance Southtown right there on Blue Bonnet. A blue bonnet across from the mall and Perkins Row. The uh, Renaissance Hotel is awesome. You want to go have a cocktail at Tallulah or have dinner tonight? Swing on by at any point this weekend to the Renaissance Hotel. Right there on Blue Bonnet, it's the Renaissance Hotel.
I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. Michael Thomas is at it again, and I just don't understand, man. Um, talked about Michael Thomas yesterday. And I, overwhelmingly, I'd say 80-20, you all agreed with me. Uh, there's you know, this small corner of the fan base that's defending Michael Thomas, which is so perplexing. Um, and he just continues. Um, you know... Jeff Duncan had the report that Michael Thomas was going to be released, and then Michael Thomas went on a t Twitter tirade about about Dennis Allen or about uh, excuse me about um, sorry um, about Jeff Duncan. And the the point I made yesterday is like Michael Thomas is is showing his behind right now. Like things aren't going his way and so he's pointing the fingers at other people. And it's a shame because this guy for the first four years of his career was arguably the best wide receiver in the NFL and he's the most talented receiver you've ever had in the history of your organization. Marcus Colston had the best career of any receiver but, but Michael Thomas is the best receiver you've ever had. And you, injuries and unfortunate things happen but how Michael Thomas has managed this is what has been is what has led us to this point. Like ghosting your organization when you have an injury, literally not communicating at all with the people that were paying you a hundred million dollars. That's not acceptable. He punched Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Remember, his own team suspended him. 
I mean, he's tweeting during games while he's injured. Taking shots at Derek Carr during games. In this offseason. I mean, the, the straw that broke, the tweet that broke the camel's back was a couple weeks ago when he's tweeting about the organization when he knew he was on his way out. Like, he's lost his mind. He's lost any you know, sensibility. Actually, what he's doing is he's showing you who he really is. When times are good, it's easy to be fan-friendly and to be engaged and a good teammate. When times aren't good, that's kind of when you show who you are through adversity. And he's shown himself not to be a good locker room guy. And so Michael Thomas tweeted today. Now he's pinned the tweet. Like, he just continues. It's like, man, just stop. Like, who? what other team is going to want to touch you with all this? But he tweeted a bit ago, it's because we not yes man, so we cancers, but under a winning coach, we're looked at differently. It's a mentality that makes losers uncomfortable because they used to losing all day career. Man, there is a major difference between being a yes man and being a good teammate. Doesn't matter what you do professionally. If you have concerns and frustrations, there are manners in which you can voice them. Michael Thomas has done that all wrong. And that makes you a bad teammate. That makes you a bad employee. Whatever you do, whatever profession you're in, things aren't always perfect. But one of the things, especially like this, that we talk about all the time, that was so important for Sean Payton was culture. And man, say whatever you want behind closed doors, but publicly, you're going to have a unified front. We talked about this. One of the best examples locally was in 2016 when the LSU-Florida feud happened. Do y'all remember that? There was the Hurricane Matthew that was coming into Florida and whether they were going to play the game, move it, whatever was going to happen. Well, Joe Oliva... And the then AD at, at Florida, Jeremy Foley, were feuding publicly. And Greg Sankey was a new commissioner. And the whole thing was, man, he had to slap him on the wrist and get him behind closed doors. He said, look, I don't say whatever you want to say publicly. Or, or behind closed doors, but publicly, we're going to have a unified front. It's like when, when Texas was coming into the conference. A&M kind of got a little sideways. Not pleased about Texas coming into the league. And they got they got put in timeout and had to publicly, suppose a unanimous vote to let Texas and Oklahoma in because they were going to be publicly unified. That's the difference here. And it's it's hard to imagine Michael Thomas not understanding that. No one's saying you have to be a yes man. No one's saying you have to just go along with your organization and everything they say and do. And nobody is saying that they're perfect, and nobody's saying except losing. Like, do you realize there has been nobody, literally nobody, that covers the New Orleans Saints, nobody that has been more vocally critical of Mickey Loomis, Dennis Allen, and Derek Carr than me, so much so that a lot of you think, I hate the Saints, which is stupid. Tell my wife that. She'll laugh in your face. I love the organization. I love the team, man. They're part of my blood. But I get paid to give opinions. And the worst part about being in the opinion media, the worst part about being in the opinion media, the worst part about being in the opinion media is giving opinions. Because no matter what you say, no matter what, you are going to piss off somebody. No matter what. It is impossible to have 100% of your audience agree with you on anything. It is impossible. Absolute. No exceptions. It is impossible to have 100% of your audience agree with you on, on, on any given topic. So, so no matter what I say every day when I sit here, I'm going to piss off somebody. No matter what I say. And yeah, some of y'all didn't like what I have to say about Michael Thomas, but it's a small, small minority. But that's the point. I mean, no, Michael Thomas, nobody is saying... Just fall in line. Nobody's saying be a yes man. But damn it, man, be a good teammate. What does it serve to go on Twitter during a game and bash Derek Carr? 
What does it serve to be a, a player on the team to go on Twitter and bash your organization? What does it serve when you're battling an injury to just turn off your phone and not talk to anybody in the organization when they've invested a hundred million dollars of you and you can't and you and you can't pick up your damn phone? That that's not about your mentality and being a winner. It's got nothing to do with that. That's you not taking responsibility that you owe the organization that has paid you a hundred million dollars because they believed in you. Nobody's asked, like, the the reason they were willing to pay you $100 million is because you're a great player and you have a dog mentality. And they want that. But that doesn't mean you get to show your ass all the time. That's why Michael Thomas is about to be cut. And the more he does this, the harder it's going to be for another team to want to take a chance on him. Look at Antonio Brown. Yeah, Pittsburgh was done with him, and the Raiders are willing to take a shot. He goes and gets frostbite on his feet before he ever plays a game he's released. I mean, eventually, that phone's going to stop ringing if you keep showing this is who you are because who's going to want to bring this into their locker room? That's not a competitor's mentality. This is a, this is a shot at Dennis Allen under a winning... We're cancers, but under a winning coach, we looked at differently. It's not that you looked at differently. It's you behaved differently. You behaved differently when the team was winning. You see Cam Jordan out there crushing his teammates? You see Demario Davis out there dogging his head coach? I, I mean, brother, what are we talking about here? Like, this isn't a Saints problem. The Saints have their problems. But this isn't a Saints problem. This is a Michael Thomas problem. It's why the most talented receiver in the history of the organization is about to be shown the door. A guy they paid $100 million to, they're about to show the door. And he just can't stop. It's like, brother, just stop. Put down the phone. Stop tweeting. Who, what, what are you serving? What is the point of this? What is the point of teeing off on Derek Carr on Twitter during a game? What good does it do hammering the Saints organization on social media? What benefit is gained by, by going after Jeff Duncan in a tirade or going after Dennis Allen today? Like What, what are you serving, man? What good is this doing? All you're doing is driving a bigger wedge between yourself and your teammates and the organization and the fan base and the rest of the NFL because every all the other 31 teams are going to see this and go, hmm, guy hadn't been healthy in four years and now he's on Twitter running his mouth every day, blasting his coach and his teammates and his organization. Like, do we really want that guy around? I mean, you know the answer. Man, I had planned on in this segment. I'm going to come back to it because I do want to talk about it. Yeah, there's this this thing up at, at Spotrack about the, the money, the, the actual dollars the Saints have spent the last three years. I mean, everybody's got to spend the same in the cap, right? But what does it cost you to have that number against the cap? Well, and I want to get to that. I'm going to get to that. But man, it's so sad and perplexing what's happening with Michael Thomas. Like, this tweet, it's because we're not yes men, so we're cancers, but under a winning coach, we're looked at differently. No. What's saying be a yes man? And and you were looked at differently under a different coach because you were a different person publicly. And things go bad, and now you're a different person publicly. I mean, all you ever hear out of Cam Jordan is, I want to win that Super Bowl, I want to win it in New Orleans. What do we have to do to get there? Stop being a yes man. You can acknowledge that there's issues. But if you have grievances, air them internally, man. That's true anywhere. I got a microphone. I could sit here and talk all day. Things that, that go on in this building. Not that anybody cares. Not that that's to the scale of Michael Thomas. But if you got a problem, you address it privately. 
sad, man. Like, this amazing dude that we all love to cheer for is just making us all, like, pick sides and being contentious about him. It's just such a weird, sad thing, man. I wish you would just put the phone down. Put the phone down. Go be healthy and be a great player again, man. All right. Uh, talk to Mincy next. It's AFR. AFR. Buying or selling, commercial or residential, you need a realtor. You need Darren James. 335-7666. 335-7666 or agent225.com. That's agent225.com for Darren James. Hey, look. Weekend's upon us. Maybe you're out house hunting. Call Darren James and the squad over there. They'll get somebody to help you out. Darren James, powered by LPT Realty, was so fired up earlier this week. Darren was down in Tampa at an LPT Realty conference, and he let me know LPT Realty is now up to 9,700 agents. It's been less than a calendar year. They've gone from one, from launch, one agent, to 9,700. It has taken other giant real estate companies uh, seven to 10 years to reach that kind of scale. So if you're a realtor and you're wondering, why are so many of my colleagues joining LPT? It's time to find out. Call Darren James, 335-7666, 335-7666, or agent225.com. Think real estate, think Darren James. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. It was a human day. Barefoot children play. Looking for the summer shade. Time to slip away. Like cypress stumps, your roots are planted deep inside of me. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. All right, rolling along here. Uh, we're going to make this a regular Friday thing. It's always great. We get to visit with our guy, Mincy, uh, on Twitter, at StoolMincy. Good enough to join us now from the Windy City. How are you, Mincy? Man, I'm doing 
great, man. I got to say, I just love ESPN Baton Rouge, I guarantee. And it's fun to be out here with you on a Friday afternoon, man. I got a great picture with y'all. And uh, i excited about this because college baseball season started to roll. And we're living in this new era now where we can gamble on college baseball. And there are all these blinds. The game's blowing up. So I think we got something here. Minzy, I, I recall several years mm-hmm. back you were you know strong pushing uh, be, you know college baseball betting. I'll admit you, man. Uh, and, and Mincy's and the Barstool guys are partnered with DraftKings. We are here as well. So this is a cool thing for us to be able to collab on. Um, Mincy, I have never in my life bet on college baseball, ever. Um, it, it, how much have you seen um, the, the lines, the odds makers evolve as this has become a little more in vogue? Because, dude, it feels like, man, college baseball is super um, – uh, I, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it it feels like it's something you'd be very – it's very unpredictable, which makes it really hard to try to handicap. Yeah, no, it's kind of like nuclear. But, dude, it's the best, though. It's the, I know I know how much <laughs> you love it, Matt. I know how much everybody at LSU loves it. It's literally – I mean, I'll always say, you know, of course football is going to be number one. I'm not going to say it isn't. But college baseball, it's always been the most underrated sport. Everyone knows it. It's been that way forever. I mean, nobody knows it more than LSU Tiger fans. That's for sure. And now that you can gamble on it, though, because it kind of is one of those things where, like, yeah, if you're an LSU fan, you watch all the LSU games, you wouldn't really care about the other ones. But now that you can gamble on it with draft teams and stuff, it makes it to where you're interested in watching all these top teams. And the thing about gambling on it, it's very unpredictable. But it's fun, man. There's just college baseball games. It's so wild. You never know what's going to happen. And uh, I love it. So my kind of strategy with it, what I figured out is, uh, what, well, I learned it a couple of years ago when Dave Portnoy was just dragging me when I took Arkansas the years that they were the number one seed and they just completely blew it and NC State got them a couple of years ago. Uh, I don't like taking the favorites too much. I mean, I know LSU was the big favorite last year. But, like, when my strategy betting college baseball, I'm looking for those plus signs because the unpredictability of the sport yeah. is, like, kind of what makes it. So I look for a lot of underdog value. And I'll just bring this up right now. Matt, you're going to laugh in my face. I'm heartbroken about my Southeast Louisiana plus 550. That's what I am. <laughs> I'm doing it, dude. So Mincy had a money line play on Southeastern on Tuesday <laughs> night. at What was it you said, plus 550? Louisiana, I saw him beat Ole Miss a few years ago and I went to the game. Southeast Louisiana like wins these midweek games against elite schools every year. It's just like something they do. Yeah, but... And uh, I, saw, I saw that plus 550. I was like, I mean, LSU's obviously one of the best teams in the country. I'm, believe me, I'm not hating. It was just, it was a perfect spot off the Houston tourney and they yeah. had lost. So I was like, oh, I can see Southeastern winning this. And yeah. I don't know. They should have. Jay Johnson talked about it. It was a pretty obvious sort of letdown spot for his team coming off four games in Houston, a long trip, and then they had to pack up and go on the road again. Record crowd at Southeastern, and, man, they almost got nipped. Um, hey, so we're going to do this every Friday. And so, Mincy, how are we going to structure this? Like, I think Muse is going to get in on it as well. And so are we just, just going to pick, like, our top three bets well, for the weekend? I think we're in a weird spot this week because I think once SEC play starts, the 10 weeks to SEC, we can make it like an SEC every week thing. Okay. You know, and like pick the best five or three SEC games or series matchups so we structure it that way. Okay. Or a couple or a couple weeks off till then. And this is, to be honest, you know, what, what's cool, I love the Shriners Classic and all that stuff, but this this is probably not the best week, weekend to college baseball. I well, mean, the Duke what. Duke Wake Forest is very I do that. have uh I went I picked three games, uh three plays okay. for tonight that that I like. Do you have three? Yeah, I got okay. three. Okay. Muse Muse, did you pull any? I did, I pulled three. All right, so Muse, I need some uh some yep. bed music, okay? And we're also gonna need a um uh eventually we're gonna need some type of type of open for however we're gonna do this. And Mincy Terrio is usually with us on Friday. His his son, Houston, he coaches Houston in high school. So there's some Fridays that are going to be a little hit or miss. So there might be days where Terrio's here with us. How about we do this? Let's use this week sort of like as... Muse, what the hell is that? It's baseball tonight, bro. Crank that up? Boy, I did not get that at all yeah. from, the, from the open of it. 
Besides, why are we using baseball tonight? I don't. Is there? There's not like a college football I, theme. College, a college baseball, baseball theme. I'd rather a classic uh, baseball tonight theme. Okay, let's see if we can find that. They changed the baseball tonight theme. I guess so. That's terrible. That's terrible news. What a terrible decision that is. All right, Mincy, let's use this week just as a trial balloon. All right, we're not going to okay. ne- next week. We start SEC play. We'll we'll actually we'll do the SEC. Like let's just use this. You, me, Muse. We'll give our picks. We'll see how we do and all. But next week is when we'll actually start like keeping the standings for ten weeks throughout SEC play. Okay. I think that's that's totally fair. This is a weird week. Uh, I will say, shout out. I know DraftKings does stuff for y'all. DraftKings, it's unbelievable. Matt, like, run lines, money lines, and over-unders on midweek college baseball games. I Let's mean, how it. far have we come here, boys? Let's do it. I'm fired up. All right, Mincy, you want to start us? Do you want to give all three of yours, or you want to just go, like, 1-1-1 one, one, one all the way around? Let me just do 1-1-1, one, 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 I guess. All right, Mincy, you start us off. Go ahead. I, I'm going home underdog. Uh, we've got an ACC series. Virginia's headed to Miami this weekend. Uh, Virginia's top 15, but I'm taking the Miami Hurricanes plus 120 at home. That's a weird place to go. And, like, my strategy in college baseball is go for this plus time, time dog. So okay. Miami Hurricanes. All right. Muse, you want to throw out your first? So, mincy has got Miami on the money line plus 120. Sure. Uh, I'm going to the big series of the weekend with Duke and Wake Forest, and I'm going to take the Blue Devils tonight. Santucci, their ace, has been fantastic. Josh Hartle's very good. But I like Duke's power numbers in that tiny ballpark in Winston Salem. What's the uh, plus one twenty four? Duke on the money line. Duke money line plus one twenty four. Okay, I am gonna go up to Knoxville. This is gonna go against. Uh, and this game starts in nineteen minutes. It's gonna go against Mincy's theory. Um, I'm gonna take Tennessee, who Kendall Rogers convinced me is sneaky awesome, and uh, I'm gonna lay the four and a half. Ooh. Minus 130. I'm going to lay the four and a half runs with Tennessee tonight. Um, Tony Vitello, his ridiculous beard, his awful personality, the punchable face. But uh, I think his team's good, and I'm going to take the balls and lay the four and a half. Well, I'll say this. I love that they have the run lines on the game because what I hate doing is taking the minus 500, minus 800 money yes. lines. And yes. So I love that you can do that. It's college baseball's metal bat. I'm not afraid to lay some runs, you know, when you got a team that can score runs. But I'm going to take it to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm That's going good. under thir- going under 13 and a half LSU Xavier tonight. You know what, uh, Mincy? I I like that play. You said it's 13 and a half. Yep. All right. Um, Luke Holman ain't giving up nothing. The one thing though, I saw the Xavier pitcher tonight has an ERA of like 19. Yeah, that that concerns me, but I, the the Holman side of it does it. I don't yeah. think he's going to give up much. All right. I mean, LSU's going LSU's going to roll, but thirteen and a half seems like a lot. All right, Mincy going under thirteen and a half. Muse. Let's go to Ruston. The uh, Bulldogs are hosting Southern Miss. I'm taking the Golden Eagles here. Oh. Yeah. Well, man, it's a spot thing. La Tech's coming off their first loss. They're twelve and one. Best start in school history. You think they'd be favored? They're not. So give me Southern Miss. All right. What's the one, minus one thirty five? Sorry. Yeah. On, on the money, money line. Right. All yep. right, Muse, I will go opposite you. Okay. I am taking Tech in that game, but I, I'm taking the one the one and a half. I'm not going on the money line. I'm taking Tech plus the one and a half. That is minus one forty. So give me Ooh. those. Give me give me the one and a half. Um, and that may not be a great play because it's juice delay. But Tech is like I, I was uh, I was talking to someone earlier this week. Tech is like the oldest lineup in the country. They're, of their starters, <laughs> their average surprising. age is like 24. So they're all grown-ass men. I think they're going to handle the first loss fine. At home, huge spot. I'm taking – you know what? Screw the runs. Oh, Muse, I, I'm scratching it out. Screw the <laughs> runs. I'm going on the money line, Muse. I'm taking Tech to win at home tonight against Southern Miss. That's plus 105. Give me Tech on the, the money line, plus 105. Love it. Take I, that I, 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 Damn, you I, I going head to head. I, I love uh, what they built in Ruston. I got to give a shout out to them. They had that tornado destroyed that ballpark a few yeah. years ago. And yeah. They got a 2,500 seat. It's, man, they got a thing up there. That tech baseball, they had a bad year. They fell off last year, but it looks like they bounced. Uh, it looks like a bounce back year. Their best player had a you know, whole thing last year. Um, but I'm glad to see they're rolling again. It's good for Louisiana for sure. All right, my final pick, I'm taking the right south. Plus 160 out in Hawaii because they got an All-American starter, Ace, fishing on Friday night. 
and plus one sixty to get price to get that. You said it's one one fifty or one sixty. Oh, I'm looking at one sixty. One sixty. One one six zero. I'm looking at it right here. Okay, so rice on the money line plus one sixty. Oh, I like that, Mincy. That's a good play. Muse, what's your last one? I like that play too. We're going to the little apple. We're taking the over nine and a half in Cincinnati, Kansas State. Both teams can swing it. Neither team can pitch it. One starter has an ERA over eight. The other's over six. I'll take over nine and a half and minus one fifteen. My last play. I'm gonna go to the big one this weekend with Duke Wake Forest. I'm gonna go under nine and a half tonight. So. I think you'll see more pitching in defense. I'll take Duke Wake Forest under nine and a half. Quintessential Friday game. Runs hard to come by. Duke Wake Forest game one under nine and a half. All right, Mincy, uh, we'll see how we do, man. Uh, of course, Barstool there, DraftKings partner, as are we. And so we're thrilled to be able to do this on Fridays. Let's hope we don't all screw it up. Let's try to make some people some money, and we'll do this uh, again next Friday. Yeah, and I'm uh, I'm going to Nashville SEC basketball tournament next week too. I've never really I've never been to the event before, so I'm pretty stoked about it. it should be fun. I've Mincy, I've been to it when it was in New Orleans, like in the when it was in the Dome actually. Um, but um, I haven't been since it's been in Nashville. But Nashville is obviously a great town. It's such a sort of become an epicenter of a lot of SEC sports, and it's a great town. So man, enjoy it next week. We'll talk again next Friday. Sounds good, man. LSU, hoping for an LSU Ole Miss first round game. It could happen. Let's do it, man. All right, Mincy, we'll see you, bud. That's uh, Ben Mintz on Twitter, at Stool Mincy. Y'all give him a follow. Uh, Excited to have Mincy do that with us, man. That's great. Mincy uh, moved up uh, to Chicago, doing great stuff with Barstool, and we appreciate him for joining us. We'll talk some college baseball with Ben Mintz every uh, every Friday here on AFR. Well, now i got a quick break. Two Tigers and the Pros next. AFR. AFR is brought to you by Action Industries. You're going to have to wait a little longer for that mound visit today because the uh, first pitch of LSU and Xavier has been moved back to 8 p.m. But when the LSU bats get going and the first time the skipper for the Xavier Musketeer steps out of the out of the dugout to make that slow walk to the mound, that mound visit will be brought to you by Action Industries. Action Industries, an official partner of LSU Athletics and of us here on AFR, we're thrilled to tell you about Action Industries. For so many people... We're introducing you to Action Industries. But Action Industries has been around since 1982. 42 years servicing the petrochemical and refinery markets. If you're a maintenance manager, a turnaround coordinator, you're looking to hire great contractors and consultants, they're in your plant, you need to call our friends at Action Industries. You can look them up online. It's actionindinc.com. So Action Industries Incorporated, right? Action INDINC.com for Action Industries, official partner of LSU Athletics. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work, creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. 
Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you, our mobile banking app. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. All right, wrapping up hour number two. We're glad you're here. Uh, Muso has Tigers in the Pros. Tigers in the Pros. They still bleed purple and gold. They're just really rich now. All right, well, it's another day, and unfortunately, it's it another is a day. It's another former Tiger looking for a new home in the NFL. The Pittsburgh Steelers are going to release Patrick Peterson. Uh, Peterson turns 34 in July. He had signed a two-year deal with the Steelers last March. was due to receive a $3 million roster bonus when the new league started. This move will save them $6.85 million against the cap. So cap casualty is Pat Pete. But did appear in each of the 17 games last season for Pittsburgh with 16 starts. Played 97% of the defensive snaps last year with some coming at safety. And now... We'll be looking. Uh, we'll be looking for for a new home. Will uh, Will Patrick Peterson? Yeah, we played the audio from the, his podcast a few weeks back, and he wants to keep playing. Yeah, and he's said he's willing to play corner or safety. He just wants to play. Um, he's clearly still productive. He fe- I think he. It sounded like he felt good about being back in Pittsburgh. Good meeting with Tomlin. It's just clearly this was a cap deal. I mean, they, I think they say what seven million or something. Six point like eight five is yeah, what I just saw on the report. Yeah. Uh, we told you earlier that Jamal Adams had been cut by the, the Seahawks. Well, now their general manager, uh, John Schneider, was on uh, Seattle Sports on Thursday and says they have not shut the door on bringing Jamal Adams back. So we will see. It will obviously be on a much more reworked deal as that was uh, that cleared $16.5 million in cap space, yeah. cutting Jamal Adams. So if he's back in Seattle, it'll definitely be team friendly. But we'll keep you updated there, too. Uh, for the first time this year, Tigers and the Pros... Oh! Yeah, man. Uh, spring training DJ LeMayhew. Big day for the pinstripes. Two for two. A double. That was his first of the spring. And an RBI, his first of the spring. Got off to a slow start, but here we go. And look, these games don't count. We know when the season starts, DJ's going to do great. He hits the baseball. That's what he does. That's what he's always done. And he plays first base. Yeah. And second. They play him at third a little bit, and too, don't they? sometimes third. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Right. You can DJ in the outfield. No. No? No. Okay. Fine. Well, that'd be good. I mean, y'all let Stanton play outfield. Hey. When he's healthy, of course. Oh, why'd that happen? Uh-oh. You screwed it up, didn't you? Yeah. I thought I was clicking. Where's Jesse? Hey, I told Jesse earlier, I, our intern, don't worry. Muse screws up every day. I thought I was clicking Still go to DJ off. off. I thought I was clicking go DJ off. It's all right, off. Muse. You know, it's I was a, not. Hey, Paul, it's about 4.53. You know, about half an hour. It's about what it takes to start seeing blurry, mm. seeing double. He's just missed that button. How do you know? Button, you know? Well, you know, Muse, after all these years of watching you screw up, really? I could yeah. certainly uh, have certain indicators. Mm. There's a lot of correlation there that would make it make sense. Okay. Okay. Uh, Nas Reed last night. Kelly High! No. no should have no, stayed. No. He should have stayed. 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 And it, unfortunately, we can't play this clip that I sent you, but uh, if you saw it, you would say he should have stayed. It was a good uh, rebound off the uh, layup miss. Nas comes flying in off the wing, grabs it, and just slams it home, rattled the rim. 13 points. It was part of that. Eight rebounds for Nas as well. He also had a steal and a block. So, really solid night for Nas Reed. He didn't hit his head on the rim like Anthony Edwards in that ball game last night on a block, but it was still a really productive night. Oh, wait. Do do you all of a sudden have it? 
No, it's... No, go. Go, go, go. Oh, that's it. That's Tigers in the Pros. I was wrapping up with that. Oh. Muse, please talk. Like, Oh, okay. That's Tigers in the Pros. Um, I, I, I'm trying to get this thing. I, I'm, I hate everything today. Yeah. I, I hate everything today. Our maybe it's the weather, whatever, but our, our internet connectivity uh, has been atrocious, mm. and it's so frustrating to try to sit here and talk, like to do a show where you're talking, right, and to keep your thoughts together while constantly fighting with a machine that does not want to stay connected to the internet. So yes, I'm very frustrated. We're brought to you by Shaw Bills Tire and Auto Service. Shaw Bills Tire dot com. Shaw Bills Tire dot com. With 18 locations across South Louisiana, you are never far from a Shaw Bills location. Say it every day. Uh, you can, whatever you might need done. If it's oil change, tire rotation, uh, if your brakes are squeaking, you need that tune-up, Shaw Bills can do all that. But most importantly, they'll sell you name brand tires at wholesale prices and they'll treat you like family. Learn more about the Charlie's Dozen. Learn about the Charlie's Customer Bill of Rights, things they feel you're entitled to as a customer. It's Shaw Bills. You're always going to have a great customer service experience. ShawBillsTire.com. AFR. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. 50 years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com.
This is Sports. I'm Kevin Winter, eight games late in the NBA on this Friday night. In the back half of the ESPN television doubleheader has Milwaukee visiting the Los Angeles Lakers. And breaking news in the Sports Center newsroom LeBron James downgraded to out tonight for the Lakers. He will not play, dealing with an ankle injury. The Lakers start the night in the tie for the ninth and tenth spots with the Golden State Warriors. So, as it would turn out, those two teams would be on a collision course in the play in tournament with the loser being done. As for Golden State, an MRI on Steph Curry's at right ankle comes back clean. Sources telling ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski, Curry is not expected to miss much time. The Warriors will host San Antonio tomorrow night and visit the Spurs coming up on Monday. News from golf. Tiger Woods not going to play in next week's Players Championship. Woods had hoped to be able to participate in one event per month. Competed in last month's Genesis Invitational. Had to withdraw due to sickness. NHL trade deadline today. The Golden Knights get Thomas Hurdle from the San Jose Sharks. Sabres send Captain Kyle Poso to the Florida Panthers. Bruins get Pat Maroon from the Wild. Rangers make three different moves, including getting Jakub Roslovich from the Blue Jackets. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Commercial Insurance. It flexes to fit your business's needs. From quick repairs to adjustable coverages and even payment options, Progressive Commercial makes it easy to get what you need. Quote today in as little as six minutes at ProgressiveCommercial.com. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Hour three, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. It's AFR presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. I'm Matt. Hey, shut up, kid. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. You And Mr. Toby Tomplay. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. 5 o'clock, Quentin time. Glad you're driving home with us. Talk with Matthew Paris of NOLA.com here in about 15 minutes. Some Saints free agent targets. Uh, if you're expecting Terrio, apologies. Uh, Terrio is an assistant uh, a coach for the Dunham baseball team. His son, Houston, is a senior. And so there's just some Fridays where they have game times that are going to conflict with the show. And so this just happens to be one of those. So apologies for that. But uh, we look forward to having Terrio back hopefully next Friday. If not, we'll do it, uh, we'll do it soon enough. Um, I do. All right. So we'll talk some free agents, uh, Saints free agent targets with Matthew Paris here in a minute. Um, I was looking at a tweet from Spotrack, and I'll, disclosure: I don't know if I'm even saying this right. I, I reference this website a lot. It's a great website. It's a great resource that structures all looks at all the contract structures for all the professional sports teams and all that sort of stuff. It's S P O T R A C. For a long time, I think I said Spotrack, and then y'all told me no, it's Spotrack, but. Do you know what it is? I don't know how to say it. It's a, uh, I think it's Spotrack. It's a uh, yeah. terrible name. What what is Spotrack? I have no clue. I guess it's like Sport Track. I don't. I but don't there's know. no K. It's yeah, just a I don't C. know. It's a terrible name. Anyway, terrible name. You did an awful job naming your company, but it's a great resource. I appreciate it. Uh, the guy's name is Michael. Michael Janini, uh, who's the the uh, and I might not be saying that right. Uh, something I've learned as a guy with a hard to pronounce last name. You want things that are easy pr- to pronounce in your life. So if your last name is G I N N I T T I, sounds very Italian though. I like. Of it. course it is. That's I great. Mean. But give me like sportssalary.com. You know what? I, <laughs> something like that. Call it what it is. Call a thing by its name. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, uh, there was there was something simplistic. That's a, I told Musso that a long time ago, uh, and I just called him Musso. So you know I was being sincere there. Um, they did a thing where they listed the actual cash spent for NFL teams over the last three years combined. So we all know the salary cap is what it is, but what does it cost to your team to get within that cap compliance? What are you actually, cash or actually spending year to year? Like, for example, if the Saints restructure a contract, well, part of that is, well, you got to convert salary to signing bonus and spread that money out over years. Well, you still have to pay the signing bonus now. That's cash out of pocket. 
In the past three seasons, 2021, 22, 23, the Cleveland Browns have spent the most money at $1.33 billion, followed by the Buffalo Bills at $1.3 billion, and the New Orleans Saints at $1.25 billion. The New Orleans Saints, who have missed the playoffs in three consecutive years, have spent the third most dollars in the entire NFL over the last three years. There is a positive spin here. And, and, and I don't mean it even to say spin because this is, I believe, a positive. And that is, you have an owner in Mrs. Benson who, just like her husband before her, is willing to spend money. I'm a Yankees fan. You all know that. The early 2000s, George Steinbrenner knew he wasn't going to live forever and was trying like hell to buy another championship, as many championships as he could before he died. And they had their 3 P 98, 99, 2000. And so much of that, that four titles in five years, was built on the back of great drafts and scouting and responsible free agency. You drafted Jeter and Posada and Rivera and Bernie, and you had these great corners to pet it, these great corners and players, and then you added Roger Clemens, and you added Tino and Brocious. You, you know, these not these high-priced free agents, but glue locker room guys, Mike Mussina. And then they started winning, and the boss was like, I got to get as many of them as I can. Jason Giambi, come on down. Kevin Brown, come on down. Randy Johnson, come on down. A-Rod, come on down. He just kept buying players. They don't really do that anymore, not to that degree anyway. So... But part of me looks at it and goes, you can vilify that, but damn it, don't you also respect the desire to win, right? Like, isn't that what, as a fan, you want? You want your ownership that is committed to winning at whatever cost? That's Mrs. Benson. Like, she's willing. Like, I want an owner that hires great people, and gets out of the way and lets them do their job and is willing to pay, provide the resources for whatever they need to do their job. That's what the Bensons, Tom Benson prior, now Gail Benson does. But you've got to consider the ROI. If you're going to spend all of this money, what are you getting in return? And the Saints, despite spending the third most dollars of any team in the NFL over the last three years, have nothing to show for it. Nine and eight, seven and ten, nine and eight. You haven't made the playoffs in three years. So you got to look at the people you've hired to spend your money and say, hey, I'm doing my part. You said you needed this money. Where's my return? And it ain't showing up, which means you're getting really close to the time where Mrs. Benson's going, hey, Mick, uh, clock's ticking here, fam. Like, contrast Gail Benson to Jerry Jones, a guy who cannot remove himself from the process. Dan Snyder, who cannot remove himself from the process. Who's the rich guy in Carolina who just keeps firing everybody in every sport all the time? Cannot remove himself from the process. Gail Benson is the antithesis of that. She'll spend money. She'll hire people. She'll get out of the way. What do you need to be successful? Here it is. Great. But when you get to the point where you're given those resources and you're not getting a return, it's time to move on. And I think you're past that point with Mickey Loomis. I've said that. Loomis, Dennis Allen, Derek Carr, ain't nobody crushed them more than me. And yes, it's time to move on from Mickey Loomis. But look also at that graphic and look at where the best teams in the NFL are. The Kansas City Chiefs are 16 on the list at $1.09 billion. Right in the, the Kansas City Chiefs, smack dab in the middle. Look at the, look at the Niners. The Niners are ninth. So, yes, there are teams that spend a lot. Now, a big part of that for the Niners is they missed on Trey Lance. You gave up a whole lot of assets to go up. You didn't hit, and now you paid a lot of guys. But the benefit for him is you got a seventh-round rookie 
contract on your quarterback. Your number two on the list is Buffalo. What is the team? What what did we see this week with Buffalo? What did we see this week with Buffalo? Muse, what did we see this week with Buffalo? They cut everybody. Why did they cut everybody? Von Miller. Why did they cut everybody? They wanted to pay Von Miller. No. Why did they why did they cut oh, everybody? Salary cap. Cap. A lot of veterans. Got instead of, hey, Trey White, we're gonna restructure your deal and kick it five years into the year in the, because we want to keep you. We're gonna bite the bullet, we're gonna let you go. We're gonna try to find someone who can play corner. Or we'll bring you back at a lesser you know, dollar amount if we can. That's the responsible thing to do. It's it's not easy, but it's the responsible thing to do. Buffalo was number two in, in, in money spent. Like they they were going for it. They had Josh Allen. They're right on the doorstep. Man, they are all in, going for it. Brought in playoff Lenny this year. I mean, they were going for it. And they fell up and they fell short. When the Saints fell short, what did they do? They went back to the cash machine, back to the ATM, and right back to the craps table. What did Buffalo do? They said, ah, I'm gonna lick my wounds. I'm gonna go home, get some dinner, get a good night's sleep. We'll reconvene tomorrow and come up with a plan and try again the next day. Big difference in approach. And you're going to see that. You're going to see next year, Buffalo's number is going to come down because they've said, we're going to take a different approach, a different tack. We got Josh Allen. How do we build around him in a responsible way? So we'll see. Pretty fascinating. Again, Spotrack, awful name, uh, listed the actual dollars spent by organization. By the way, the very bottom dead last in the NFL on that list, number 32, Chicago Bears. Number 31, Atlanta Falcons. Number 30, New England Patriots. Washington Commanders. Arizona Cardinals. How about Detroit? At 27. Had a pretty good year, didn't they? But look at the bottom of the list. Chicago Bears. They're not spending. They're not committing anything. They don't like their coach. They don't like their quarterback. They're not committing anything. It's very indicative of how ownership approaches their model. Not saying the Saints are wrong for having an owner that's willing to spend, but you got to get a return. And if you don't, you need a new path. It's time for a new path. Okay. Uh, it's after further review. If you're just joining us, thanks for being here. If you missed it, um, LSU. Xavier first pitch moved to 8 p.m. because of the weather. So they'll kick that back about 90 minutes. Um, but they still look like they're going to be able to get that game in tonight. We're brought to you by Pure Restoration, pure-restoration.com. Look, as wet as it is, all of the, the, the water and the humidity, it's a breeding ground for mold. If you have or think you might have black mold, Pure Restoration can help. They'll come in, patented non-toxic dry fog. They'll spray, close the doors. Let the fog dwell. As soon as the fog dissipates, boom, you're back in free and clear. Home, office building, commercial spaces. As a matter of fact, next week they're going to fog one of the biggest commercial spaces in all of Baton Rouge. So it doesn't matter if it's a school, if it's a governmental building, if it's a church, if it's your home or office building, Pure Restoration can help. Pure-Restoration.com. It's pure-Restoration.com. Um, we will get to an LSU Xavier weekend preview in about 15 minutes from right now. And uh, when we come back, though, Matthew Paris will be with us from uh, NOLA.com. Talk a little uh, free agent Saints target. Stay here. AFR. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com.
Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, hardy plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Oh, by the way, we do shutters too. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. All right, Muse, Tennessee, two-run homer. Balls are leading Illinois three to one, bottom one. I laid those four and a half. Right. I'm coming for you, Mincy. I'm coming for you. We're going to be sweating college baseball bets now here. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> Uh, Mincy's going to be part of our Friday shows now. Muse, uh, Mincy, and I are going to give uh, our best three college baseball bets for the weekend. I laid uh, four and a half today with Tennessee against Illinois. Pauly, do you want to be a part of it at all? Are you interested? In no, uh, Pauly's not even going to say words. He just, he just, he did uh, almost like, like if uh, uh go ahead. I said I'm not the gambling guy. I don't that, really know much about it. Do you think I know anything about betting on college baseball? Do you Probably think I know? know. And do you think I know anything about the Illinois baseball team that's playing at Tennessee right now? Good point. Literally zero. That. It's a, you're, you'd almost be like Mama Scone, which is almost time for Mama Scone's March Madness Bracket Challenge again coming up as well. I just keep getting myself in all these these bets and challenges. Like, what is, what is wrong with me? Uh, competitive guy. Will you grabbed no, no, your mic. No, Do you have no. anything to say? I, I, you, I was you, going to, but you sound like you were wrapping it up. You grabbed your mic, pulled it to your face, and looked at me. And then you sounded like you were wrapping it up. So I'm like, okay, we'll move so instead on. Instead of fighting with me, make your point. Well, no, I was just going to say, yeah, you do, but, I mean, they work. That's all I was going to say. It wasn't even a good point. <laughs> Matthew Paris joins us now. He's the Saints writer for NOLA.com. How are you, dude? Hey, good. Thanks for having me. Welcome to our dysfunctional family. We're glad to have you. It's great times here. 
Um, hey, you got a piece up talking about some free agent targets for the New Orleans Saints. Uh, what do you think is maybe the the Saints typically will spend big like day one, then they'll let the market settle and kind of jump back in after you know things have calmed a bit. What would you say is the biggest target need they have? Yeah, I, I would go with pass rusher. Um, I, I think tackle. Well, tackle I think is their biggest need, but I think that makes a lot more sense to fill through the draft just if you look at how the draft shakes out this year. But I think there's some really nice, intriguing pass rushing options for the Saints there. I, I think you know, some cheaper kind of mid-tier deals that the, you know that the, that they'll probably do this year rather than you know spend big like they did last year with Derek Carr. They don't really have the room to do that this year. But uh, I do think there are some people on the market that you know make a little sense, and that was what the list today was trying to provide a little bit. But ultimately, it was kind of more of a guessing game. So. What are the uh, what would you say of the names you provided that you think could be a realistic target? Yeah, you know, I'm really interested to see if they go after Josh Uche. Uh, I think that's a guy that makes a lot of sense for them. You know, that they had that role with Zach Bond. They've actually trained together in the past, and Bond has said that you know Uche is kind of a guy that um, that he models his game after. And you know, I think they really found something last year with kind of that smaller hybrid like pass rushing role and I think if you look at a guy like Uche he was pretty utilized or underutilized in New England but has like an 11 and a half season or 11 and a half sack on his resume um, only had three this year but you know that might benefit the Saints in terms of if they're looking at cheaper options I think he's really interesting if they want to swing for the upside you know I covered Chase Young in Washington mm. that would be really interesting I don't know if they want to you know spend for him but I think Chase Young's at a point of his career now where um, you know, he probably has to take a one-year uh, deal to restore his value. So I, I would say either Uche or, or Chase Young. The, it was interesting you listed some linebackers as well because Demario Davis is still playing at a, at a pro bowl, if not all pro level. Uh, and Pete Werner, when he's healthy, and he has been healthy, has been really good. What they lack is depth. So do you think that they'd be in the market to target more, a starter or more of a rotational piece in a backup? Yeah, probably rotational. I mean, it, I think it hurts that Nephi Sewell is coming off an ACL injury. You know, ideally, I thought he played pretty well down the stretch of last season before he got hurt. Um, there is that Mac Wilson guy from uh, New England. Uh, Mass uh, Live reported that the Saints were interested in him. I think he, he, they were one of four teams uh, that was listed alongside him. So, you, you know, I can see them adding to the position. I don't necessarily know if they'll go for a high-end starter, just because, like you said, I think uh, Demario Davis and Pete Werner are still playing at pretty well, like high levels in their career. Matthew Paris is our guest. NOLA.com on Twitter at Matthew underscore Paris, P-A-R-A-S. You'll give him a follow there. If um, We also obviously learned about the Marcus May um, release. Tyron Matthews been re-signed. Is safety a spot where you think they look in free agency or the draft? Uh, maybe the draft. I mean, I, I think they're still pretty high on uh, Jordan Howden. Um, they would like to bring back Jonathan Abram. I, I know that. He played really well for um, them down the stretch last year in that Tampa game. He was uh, particularly very good. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they re-signed him at all. And then, you know, maybe they draft someone late. And, you know, they have these three fifth-round picks now that they uh, got today from the comp picks. Maybe they use one of those on a safety or something. But uh, I think, you know, starting-wise, they're okay. And three comp picks for the New Orleans Saints. So they'll, they'll be, uh, they have a heavy draft load on day three, but the Saints never stand pat. It's, it'll be interesting to see how they package picks to move up and what position they target. Do you think, um, with everything happening with Michael Thomas right now, is, is that a position where they're comfortable with the guys they have, or are they looking to add more? I think they're looking to add more. Um, you know, they really only have three guys right now. Uh, you know, I think those are solid three and Chris Olave, uh, Rashid Jaheed, and A.T. Perry. But they're going to need a couple more to, to flesh it out. Um, they still have Lynn Bowden's rights. Um, he'll probably be back. But, you know, they, they kind of need that possession wide receiver, that, that role that Michael Thomas filled. And then another guy that they could see, we were talking about switching offenses to Clint Kubiak. You know, they don't really have anyone right now that excels after the catch. Maybe Chris Olave in a scheme change can, can do that, but I think they would maybe like to add someone there as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, either a possession, uh, you know, a bigger receiver or, or someone who can run after the catch. Uh, 
either in free agency or the draft, I think. You, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they had that position. You did mention K.J. Osborne. Uh, why does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, you know, I, I just think the, the familiarity with Clint Kubiak, he had a career year under Kubiak in 2021, isn't a guy that has had a lot of, like, success in his career, so maybe he comes cheaper, but he's a guy that kind of excels after the catch. I think his career best is 5.1 or something like that in that regard. And, uh, you know, just you see this a lot, right, in terms of when new coaches are hired, they, they bring guys with them, um, you know, in Washington, uh, Cliff Kingsbury just they added uh, Zach or someone familiar with that system. But I, I was looking for guys like that. You know, another one that came to mind was Adam Thielen, but he's still on the mm. contract in Carolina. So, uh, you know, I, that went no, down I think <laughs> we, we know we know about uh, coaches bring guys with them. The entire Denver Broncos roster and coaching staff at one point <laughs> were were in New Orleans with Sean right. Payton. Um, when we started, you said offensive line is probably a, a spot where they look at in the draft. I'm really excited about the possibility in a deep tackle draft of getting someone at 14 like Olu Fashano, who would be great, in my opinion. Um, what do you think they might be looking at, or are they looking offensive line in free agency? Yeah, free agency. I, you know, I, I put Kevin Zeitler on the list as a guard option. That was more so just, you know, a pro football, uh, pro football focus linked them to them as well. I mean, they, they, kind of taken some swings on cards before. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with guys like, you know, Max Garcia. You know, he wasn't a, a sexy signing last year, but he was, he, he filled a role for them. He, he was a depth, guy, you know, piece and started a, here and there. So uh, I think a guy like that, maybe it is, even is Max Garcia again, but just someone to, to kind of add a body. Uh, I think they could use a little help on the interior, even though we focus so much on, tackles kind of all off season. I, I think they would like some more depth at that position, even though they have some younger guys like Trevor Penning and Nick Salvardi where they can uh, maybe develop a little further. He's Matthew Paris. He's got a piece up at NOLA.com. You'll go read some free agent targets for the Saints. Getting to be that time of year uh, next week. And obviously whenever free agency begins, we'll uh, after that we'll uh, turn our attention to the draft. He's on Twitter at Matthew underscore Paris, P-A-R-A-S. Go give him a follow. Thanks, man. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, have a good weekend. It is after further review We're brought to you by the Williamson Eye Center. If you want to see 2020, call 924 2020. That's 924 2020 for the Williamson Eye Center. WilliamsonEye.com. WilliamsonEYE.com. I know it's a Friday. I know it's a Friday at 5 27 p.m. And you're probably right now not thinking about, man, I'm going to go schedule my LASIK exam. I'm telling you, if you don't do it now, you have to wait till the next time you hear me talking about it to go, ah. Scone's been telling me I want to go do that. Do it now. Just do it now. Pull out your phone. Call the number. I'll give it to you again here in a second. Or if you'd rather schedule online, williamsoneye.com. Williamsoneye.com. There's no obligation. You're just going to go sit down, have an evaluation with Dr. Blake, and take a look at your eyes and see what might be a solution for you, a refractive solution to where you can ditch your contacts or glasses forever. Do it right now. Here's the number, 924-2020, 924-2020, or williamsoneye.com. I appreciate Matthew Paris uh, for joining us here. Have you, uh, either of you guys, given any thought to Saints draft? Like I said, if you weren't here at the beginning of the show, I went on the record I'm I'm in on the Saints at 14. My dream scenario is Olu Fushanu, the offensive tackle out of Penn State. The more I look at it, he's a guy that last year probably would have been a top 10 pick had he come out. Um, deeper offensive line, dra offensive tackle draft this year, like receiver. Good comp is Brian Thomas. A year ago, Brian Thomas is a, is a top half of round one guy. This year, he's he's a 20s pick because it's a deep receiver draft. Fashanu last year, potential top 10 pick, athletic dude, only 21 years old. He He's 21, he'll turn 22 in December. So he'll turn 22 at the end of his rookie season. Uh, probably took a little ding at the combine because he had, had like a quad injury or something, so he couldn't compete in all the stuff. Kind of like Keon Coleman went there, ran a 4-6, and so they great receiver, really productive player, saw his, you know, his stock dip a little bit. Um, do y'all have any opinions like, 
where you, if not player, position that yeah. you'd love to see him take? Yeah, position for me is definitely offensive tackle as well. I mean, I haven't looked as in-depth at the players, but this is such a deep offensive tackle class in the draft this year that when you whiffed on Trevor Penning, you have to go replace that. And, and even there, Ryan Ramchick, sure, they're giving him like the clean bill of health right now, but how much longer does he have? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, for me, it has to be offensive tackle. And I really like the potential. For the, I know we just talked edge rusher there in free agency, but for them to get one of those potentially at 45, I think you should you could find good value at, uh, at 45 at edge rusher as well. I feel like we went down that road last year. and so, It's fair. And it's... It's evidence that, yes, look, we, you found Trey Hendrickson in round three. Yeah. So you can find productive players anywhere in the draft. Um, but maybe it's just the sting of having done that a year ago. And there's pretty good reason why the elite edge rushers come off the board, <laughs> off the board yeah. early. So I will say I have seen a couple mocks have them uh, at, with Chris Braswell there at 45, which I think if you could get him, I mean, if he's still available there, I think that'd be a really nice pick. For, from an edge rusher. Another Alabama guy. Yeah, I know. Polly? I'm with Moose. I think I think line, both offense and defense, is oh, we're all biggest agreement. priority. But I also wouldn't be opposed to like best player available if Brock Bowers or someone like that yeah. Yeah. slides down to the Saints. They I have, would like that. They just have so many needs, man. It's like on a, like they, they have a need at every position on offense. Mm-hmm. They that you didn't Malcolm Roach is a free agent, so you do need another body at interior defensive tackle. So if the right guy is there, it could make sense. Um, We talk about linebacker all the time just because DeMario Davis is old. Like, he's playing. He's awesome. I love him. He's the man of God. I wear my man of God headband on Saints game days. My wife thinks I'm ridiculous. I'm a grown man who wears a, a man of God headband while I watch the game at my house. I know I'm ridiculous. A lot, but he's he ain't gonna play forever, you know. Are the Lattimore trade rumors? Is there anything to that? If so, are you looking corner? I mean, this team like there's a. I know they were nine and eight, but you're not close to being a championship team. You have a lot of needs on. You, you were nine and eight against the worst schedule maybe you've ever faced in the in in the franchise history. So. Yeah, you got a lot of needs. I, I I'm. I could be sold on almost anything they do. I just think if you were trying to have a pecking order list. At the top, I think would be would be tackled if you can get the right one. All right, uh, it's after further review. We'll not got a quick break. Let's do a uh, an LSU Xavier baseball preview. We'll do that next. Uh, by the way, if you missed it again, first pitch not they pushed it back about ninety minutes. So first pitch for LSU Xavier eight p.m. tonight. Stay here. AFR brought to you by Rouse's, the official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. Rouse's.com. It's Friday in Lent. You know that by now. Five thirty. Knocking off of work. What are you going to do for dinner? Every Friday, get off work. We have this conversation. I'll call Erica. Heading home, you want me to pick up something for dinner? Yeah, what do you want? I don't know. What do you want? Well, it's the what do you want thing over and over again. Let me solve that for you. Go to Rouse's. Walk in. When you walk in the front door at Rouse's, go to your left, and you'll see all the seafood options. They've got sushi. There's something for everybody. You got sushi. They've got the seafood market. So if you want to grab a piece of fish to throw in the grill or in the oven, you can do that. If you want fried catfish, fried shrimp, they've already got it ready to go. And they've got their hot and boiled kiosk. So if you want boiled shrimp, boiled crawfish, they got it ready. Bag, tag, just grab and go. It's at Rouse's. The official supermarket of the New Orleans Saints. It's Friday and Lent. They got all your seafood options, all the fixings as well. So if you want boiled potatoes and corn, they got that too separately bagged. It's so easy. Just go to Rouse's. Rouse's. This feels like home. Bayou Ford has the new inventory to get you in a new Ford truck or SUV today. Or customize your next vehicle just the way you want. All new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile powertrain warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. It was a humid day. Barefoot children play. Looking for the summer shade. Time to slip away. Like cypress stumps, your roots are planted deep inside of me. Oh, I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. 
What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Breck teamed up to reimagine your parks, and you imagined big. With your help, we went to work creating 12 beautiful community parks across the parish. A family-sized water park, miles and miles of trails, and parks just for your dogs. There are more places to splash, to explore, to run wild, and even soar. You imagined we delivered gold. Breck, your number one park system in the nation. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. Uh, the LSU women's basketball team is playing in the SEC tournament. Uh, and with seven minutes to play in the second quarter, uh, the Tigers are beating Auburn 37 to 7. <laughs> is that good? 37 to 7. Uh, that's like the score midway through the second quarter when LSU's playing Grambling <laughs> in football. What well, was something like that, yeah, wasn't it? Was, yeah. No, Gr Grambling did score. Gram they did score early. Grambling yeah. did. Oh, Threw the ball man. all over the place. Well, he put, the, the guy, um, the Grambling receiver posterized Denver Harris. I remember that in the end zone, yes. Um, anyway, so LSU, if you, if you remember, not only, if you're not following the, the women's basketball team closely this year, their first conference loss this year was on the road at Auburn. And then, uh, it was a 67, 62 final, I think. And then they played a couple of weeks ago in Baton Rouge in, in the, the second game of the season. And it was another really tight ball game and LSU managed to come through, uh, and win a close one on their home floor. And, you know, it's it's funny because I'm looking up at the TVs in studio and we got the LSU women's game against Auburn and then uh, the, the other TV, uh, ESPN2, is previewing uh, UFC 299. And so it, it's a reminder, it's a common uh, saying in, in the fight game, which is styles make fights. And so sometimes stylistically when, when teams are very different, it can create challenges for a certain style of fighter. Here's a good football analogy. You remember, like, all the, the Oregon teams, like the up-tempo, fast Oregon teams? They would always, always, always struggle with Stanford. It didn't make any sense, except for, right? Except that Stanford, they would just line up with too tight and, and a fullback, and they would just bully you, and they'd slow the game, and it was just stylistically not the pace or style that Oregon wanted to play, so it gave them a lot of trouble. That was kind of the thought with this, that Auburn was maybe a team stylistically that just gave LSU trouble while they played two close games. Clearly, uh, the third time for Kim Mulkey and her squad is a charm as they are up 39-9 to with five minutes to play in the, in the first half. So uh, LSU is just, uh, they're, they're taking Auburn apart right now. And I, I know we've talked about it a bit. 
But two things very quickly about, about this team. We'll move on. I do want to talk some, some LSU baseball and uh, against Xavier, and then we will get to ask us to wrap the show. No Terrio today, but we'll do an Ask Us segment with me, Muse, and Pauly. So if you want to get a question in, you can get it. Email us, tweet us, text us. Um, two things. Number one, I think we keep saying this LSU team is peaking at the right time. Oh, my God, she missed a layup. The Auburn girl on a fast break just missed a layup. That was that was brutal. Anyway, um, they're, they're playing their best basketball right now. And that's I, that's objectively true. And you know, Kim Mulkey has talked about it a lot. She knew coming into this season, especially replacing Alexis Morris, she had to find who your point guard was going to be. Haley Van Lith has really emerged in that role. We've seen last year Poa play, play some point as well. But ever since they lost the back-to-back games to Carolina and Mississippi State, you've really seen them find their stride. I think the biggest the biggest difference is is defensively. They have not allowed a team LSU has not allowed a team to score more than 66 points since that loss to Mississippi State. They have just become a a much more intentional effort-driven defensive team. When you watch them it's very clear and it's evident right now they're winning 39 to, to whatever I said it was 39 to 9 right there at break. Anyway, so we'll see. Um, hopefully, we get to see LSU in South Carolina on a collision course uh, for a second time and maybe a third as you get into the postseason. You want to be playing your best around tournament time? The LSU women seem to be doing that. All right. It's after further review. Brought to you by Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. Windows, door siding, Relief Windows, and ReliefWindows.com. Tell you every day, energy-efficient replacement windows. Beautiful entry doors. Hardy plank vinyl siding. Oh, yeah. They do indoor shutters as well. If... If you're going to go shop price, I'll tell you this all the time. If you're going to go shop price, there's no sense in calling relief windows. If you're just going to find the lowest bid. But ask yourself this. If you just hire the person that's going to do it the cheapest, why are they the cheapest? What are you getting? What type of quality? If something goes wrong, when inevitably your window leaks, are they going to fix it? Are they going to fix it for free? Relief windows, you never have to worry about that. They offer you a lifetime transferable warranty on labor, material, and glass breakage. Ask another company, hey, where's your service department? Do they even have a service department, or is it chucking a truck? At Relief Windows, you know who it is. They have a full-fledged service department to service you after the sale, if and when you ever have an issue. It's Relief Windows. They'll never take a dollar from you until they're done and you're thrilled with the work. It's Relief Windows. Windows, doors, siding. Oh, yeah. They do indoor shutters as well, Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. All right, LSU and Xavier, three-game series, game one tonight out at the box starting at 8 p.m. Muse, um, I know from you, so at the box, you gave us a, a Xavier preview. I Look, I, I can look at the at the, the numbers. Their pitching staff has a staff ERA like in the double digits. It's atrocious. It looks like they got one hitter that hits over 400, 434. Um, give us a, a thumbnail here from what you found researching Xavier. Yeah, so you're right. I mean, the pitching staff's been really rough, and it's it's been kind of from all angles. One thing that really stands out, they struggle with walks a lot. They they will walk you. Two of their starters have double-digit walks already, one 13 and 13 innings, the other 14 and like six and two-thirds. That so, sounds bad. Yeah, that's not good. But teams are also at over 300. So LSU will be able to score against them. At least they should, especially with the way LSU's been able to work counts. I like them to draw a lot of free passes. Um Offensive. By the way, one of Mincy's plays, what do you think of Mincy? One of Mincy's uh, three picks was the LSU Xavier under 13 and a half today. I don't hate that because while their starter tonight, Xavier starter, that is Hoskins, I believe his name is, he he was really good for them last year. He was like seven and two. He's off to a really rough start, but he performed. He was the preseason all big East. Like he, he's actually a really good pitcher. He's just off to a rough start. So would Holman, I could see uh, would, that. Not, not Holman. Uh, would Lower have been their Friday guy? No, I think they would have kept him in the bullpen. He would have been a bullpen guy? I think they would have kept him into the, in the bullpen. I can't tell you honestly that I know a lot about what Xavier was a year ago. I know that LSU loved lower left. You have the bullpen, a veteran guy, but I... They knocked... Look uh, at their staff right now. Yeah. I mean, there is something... It's like when LSU had Zach Hess. It was like there's something to be said of take your best arm and put him on Friday night. I agree. Anyway. Uh, go ahead, sorry. You, you mentioned the... Uh, the guy hitting over 400, uh, who I can't remember his name now. Uh, Martino, I, no, I think is his name it's or something that, like that. it's not that because I said it earlier. It's uh, Waxman. I, oh, Isaac, Waxman. Isaac Waxman okay, is hitting so, 434. Yeah. Waxman's no, four, a guy. 464. Tied for the lead in home runs, too. He's come on late. Uh, he, he, would, he didn't play at all last year. He's a sophomore, and he's just 
like taken over their lineup. He's very good. Their first baseman's very good. McCormick. They seem that they've uh, shuffled a lot of guys in and out of the lineup, so you could see a lot of different combos from Xavier. But right. they can swing it a little bit. I will say that. Uh, team batting average two eighty right now yeah. for Xavier, and uh, they got fourteen. Um, forgive me, no, uh, twenty home runs. Twenty home runs in thirteen games. So a homer and a half per game. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, in any event, LSU Xavier, 8 o'clock tonight for game one, 5 o'clock on Saturday. The weather should be much better the rest of the weekend. 5 o'clock Saturday and then 12 noon on Sunday out at the box. It's after further review. Our uh, Friday shows are brought to you by Don Juan Cigar Bar right there in town center. Go get you uh, some stogies, stock your stash, or just hang out at the bar, have a cocktail, a cigar, and enjoy the weekend. It's after further review. We'll knock out our final break of the show. Come back. Um, no Terrio, but we will get to a little Ask Us. So anything from you, Paulie, or me, fire away. Email us, tweet us, or text in the 225-396-4400, 396-4400, We'll wrap it up next. AFR. Get Gordon. Get it done. Gordon McKernan, Injury Attorneys. Man, you want to know one of the reasons why I've really, really enjoyed endor- endorsing Gordon McKernan? I think everybody has seen Gordon, right? TV, billboards, radio, a- everywhere. Like everybody knows, you, you can't go anywhere without being aware of Gordon. But this has allowed me the opportunity to get to know him. And one of the things through all the NIL deals we've done and having Gordon in studio, do he, all the, the social media that he's done, the grubbing with G, the riding with G, all everything. It's allowed people to kind of get to know him. I'll tell you the story, and I don't mind sharing it. I, Gordon called me this morning just to check on Drew. He had seen something online, maybe was concerned. that, that some, well, Drew's fine, by the way, my, my son. But... Just call me out of the blue just to say, hey, if you need anything, let me know. I'm, I'll ha- help however I can. Like, that's that's not something you see on a commercial or billboard. That's just a, a human being being a genuinely good person. And uh, I'm thrilled to endorse him. Get Gordon. Get it done. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. IU Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is taking $17,500 off new 23-1500 Bitcoin trucks. We're open for business in our beautiful new showroom and taking $17,500 off new Ram 1500 trucks. All new Bayou vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Oh shoot, I forgot to play the song. I got a guy who can fix this. Jerry and Benny Payne began Central Plumbing Company out of their driveway in Tanglewood Subdivision. Fifty years later and four generations down the road, we continue to serve Baton Rouge and the surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Residential, commercial, industrial, or hospitality, Central Plumbing is here 24-7, 365. We want to thank our customers, family, and friends for 50 years of success. We're looking forward to 50 more. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric.
after further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. Down the stretch, we come final segment here on a Friday edition of AFR, presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. We'll get to a little Ask Us, Muse, Polly, Me, Firewave, Got Anything. Um, I, I'll be here Monday, and then um, I'm heading up to New York. Uh, Barrett Sports Media annually does their Barrett Sports Media Conference, and uh, so I'll be in New York. Uh, for, for the Barrett Sports Media Conference. And there, I, I'm actually going to be presenting uh, one of the things, which is pretty cool, about uh, how YouTube works in sports radio. So all of our YouTube strategy that we've done over here, they asked me to kind of present on that. So We're sharing the secrets? Uh, I mean, what? they're not really secrets. It's just most people are too lazy to go find out what they are and enact them. That's fair. It's not really a secret sauce. Thumbnails, titles, yeah. when you post, consistency, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, but uh, I, yeah, of course, we'll let them know. We'll let them in on it. So uh, Muse will be filling in. I'll be here Monday, but then Muse will be here for the rest of the week. So uh, maybe two weeks from today, we'll see if we can run it back with Terrio. Yeah. Been a minute. He wasn't here last week. And then the week before, I was in Lake Charles. I, yeah, so I went there then. So, one, two, this is the third consecutive week in Ontario. I'm not here next week, so it'll be four. It'll be like five. That may be the longest no Terrio Friday drought ever. Might be. That's, oh, it's a, that's, that's excessive. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot. lot. It's a lot. Uh, okay, let's see. Chris Fucht. What was that? Chris Fucht. Okay. F E U C H T. That's how you say it. Fucht. Said, did Nate throw a perfect inning in the ninth the other night? I think he means an immaculate inning. I mean, a perfect inning would be three up, three down. Right. An immaculate inning would be nine strikes. Um, and no. He just missed it, was, it though. It was, ten, it was ten pitches. Ten pitches, yeah. He struck out the side on ten pitches, so he just missed an immaculate inning. Um, email us. Uh, tweet us at Matt Moscona. Or at 104.5 ESPN or text your question to 225-396-4400, Uh Nathan Hodge said, thoughts on the time change this Sunday. Do you like the fallback or spring forward change? I hate daylight savings time. Just, just pick one and stick to it. Leave it. Wait, do you... I mean, I, I prefer uh, I prefer what we're on now. I like having the quote unquote extra hour to sleep or whatever. But I mean, I I just wish you'd leave it be. It doesn't feel like it matters anymore these days. When you said the extra hour to sleep, you only mean on the day of the fall back. You don't or, have an extra whatever. hour to sleep. Yeah. Well, right now we gain, but we we gain the hour, right? And then. See, it's stupid. No, hold on, Just hold get on. rid of it. No, no. It's so dumb. <laughs> Polly is laughing. At you. It's so dumb. <laughs> Polly, he doesn't, it's t- he the, doesn't understand that daylight saving it, work. No, it's, You're smoking too much weed, Moose. <laughs> the friggin' all, Polly like, from the top row. We create it. The sun doesn't ever move. Like, okay, yes, actually, as the year goes along, depending on where the Earth is positioned in relation to the sun the days do get longer. Like you probably notice right now when we walk outside at 5.53, it's still daylight. Correct. Okay, the days get longer. In the winter, the day daylight it's hours shorter. get shorter. So when you said you don't like daylight savings, I, I think hate most, it. hold on. Daylight savings is what we're going into so that we save more daylight. Most people prefer that time of year because you have more daylight hours. Would you yeah. say that? I mean, sure they okay. would. Absolutely. So you don't. So you just misspoke. It's not that you don't like daylight savings. You just don't like changing the time. Right. I think it's pointless. Okay. The, so I lived in Indiana for my freshman year of college. Indiana was a state where they don't change their time, but for ha- because of that. For half the year, you're on Eastern time, and for half the year, you're on Central time. And that sucks. Yeah, That, that is I, really a mind bleep. I can you see know how that I mean. would stink. Like yeah. trying to calibrate in your brain if you're on Eastern time or Central time for half the year. That sucks. Um, oh, Big Sill. 
Like Bill Sib Big Sib. Oh, okay. She's right, being interviewed right. at the SEC tournament. Love that. Way. How about that? 86 career double doubles. That's an SEC record. It says good. it right there on the screen. It's pretty good. Big Sill, Drew Hill. Drew Hill. I'm miss that in the. Uh, yeah, well, I, I had to retire it when she I retired. Know. Hey, play right now. Well, I took it off the button. So That's we, what I meant. Uh, um. So anyway, so my understanding is part of the reason for the daylight savings is for farmers, for agriculture, and more daylight hours whenever they're. When they're in in season, um, at least that's part of it. Yeah. My thing so, is, oh, go ahead. No, no. Well, no, I was just gonna say, like we were just talking about, the days naturally get longer, they naturally get shorter. Why do we need? Why do we need to move the clock with like that? That's what I don't like. I just think that's dumb. So, but I know the farmers, and I because get that. Because you part. have even more sunlight. Because then it's like eight o'clock at night when it gets dark here during the spring and summer time months. Sometimes past eight o'clock. I spent a summer in Minnesota, southern Minnesota, which is all farmland. Uh, my second year at LSU, um, doing a door-to-door -door book sales internship with the Southwestern Company. So go. I just called on farmers. I, you know, just cold call, knocking on doors all day. And there were times it was like 9 o'clock at night up there before it got dark. I mean, it's, it's wild. I go to Alaska, and it's daylight 20 hours out of the day. Anyway, um, set your clocks, people. Remember, daylight savings, Saturday, Sunday morning, 2 a.m. We'll see you. AFR. When it comes to ending cancer, we push forward, always working together for you. That's why our cancer experts at Oshner have clinically integrated with MD Anderson Cancer Center. This means advanced cancer care, including access to life-saving clinical trials and integrating care to treat the whole you. Introducing Oshner MD Anderson Cancer Center, Long live you. Elevate brand visibility. Ignite customer engagement with the power of radio and digital advertising combined. Guarantee Digital Media brings the two together as a trusted media partner in Louisiana for nearly a century. Claim your free digital audit at GuaranteeMedia.com. There it is. The extra mile. On the border of expected and extraordinary. For those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Power up your next project with John Deere Deals by Sunshine. Whether you're working hard or playing hard, our knowledgeable team will help you find the right product for you. Ask us about our amazing tractor package promotions. Learn more about what it means to be powered by sunshine at sunequip.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable 